All right, welcome to a, another edition of Hand Raise. Are we hearing each other? Are yeah, hearing? I hear you. All right, you we, we all good? All right, yeah. here's a, uh, another edition of Hand Raise, guys. Texas A&M, 24, Ole Miss, 17, losing uh, losing to the Aggies by seven tonight. We're going to pour some alcohol. We're going to talk some Ole Miss, Texas A&M. We're going to open up the phone lines. We're going to do a lot of stuff here with the uh, next little bit with you. Are we, we good sound-wise? Somebody give me some some thumbs up, some some yeses, some noes, some, uh, some, some, some critiques of some some type here. I know we got a little delay, but when you get it, give me uh, give me something. They're busy naming. Sounds co- good. I see. Okay. They're busy naming coaching candidates right now. Oh, is that what we're doing? That's what hey, we're doing. Buddy Stevens getting a vote here <laughs> as we start the uh, the pre-show to here this uh, this here podcast. We uh, got a lot to you again. We'll uh, we'll open the phone lines here in a bit. We're going to talk for a minute first. We're going to pour some drinks. We'll do that. Do you have, do you have one already? Or are you uh, you, yeah, you, you need something? I've got I've got to pour something. I've got some uh, Eagle Rare and uh, I've got the the Pinot Noir prepared for. When I switch. Yeah, you you got a lot of comments last week on the uh, drinking the the entire bottle of wine with some really big gulps going on there yeah, about it midnight. It happens. I had my physical this week, and they told me that all my blood work came back great. So really, yep, we're all good. What, what what are you guys drinking? What are we drinking out there? Give me some give me some brands. Give me some types. Give me some uh, some some spirits. Give me something while we're. Uh, I've had coffee already. I've got a bottle of water here. Um, Golden Goats having the Buffalo Trace with the Pinot Chaser. I appreciate that. Okay. So uh, some people have said that they're written house. Yeah, see that? Okay. Jaeger. Land Shark. Did you try, did you try it at the stadium? Did, did did anybody knock out the uh, the challenge? I saw it was named after me, where you 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 do every uh, alcohol option in in Vault Hemingway tonight. Everybody, anybody do that? Hope you call in too, because that means you had at least eight beverages. A coffee enema. Okay. Yeah. Well, that counts too. Yeah. Water. Someone my- someone mentioned bleach. Oh, good. Rubbing alcohol mixed with tears. There's our front runner. Four nice. roses. What kind of four roses? That's not. That's, that's too vague. Ooh, pinhook. Hopefully the kind where it looked like the pill on label because that was really good stuff. Once they got a little more mass market, that stuff's been trash lately. But the early stuff, really, really, really good from from pinhook. That's one of my. That's one of my things. So Ole Miss loses. I'm, t- I'm not. You're not. You're not what, there. What, I'm. I'm jumping the gun over I'm, here. I'm, Are you in a hurry? No. No, we're going to be settling here. in. I haven't poured a drink yet, and he's wanting to Pour talk football. Drink. I'm That's, not there yet. There's a lot to um, get to. Brought to you tonight by Widow Jane. 12, 12 year on the Widow Jane tonight. It's very good. It is. It's very good. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, I'm, His wife is having the Apothic Crush, uh, Crush Smooth Red Blend. It's a little sweet for me, but I can. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a it's a decent it's for the, for the price. It's a nice wine. It's it's just kind of a. Uh, it's kind of sweet. Nick is having the High West Double Rye. I, I, I'm reluctant to tell you this because I like to be able to get it when it's on the stores. High West makes a, uh, it's called Campfire. I can turn Neil up a little bit. You're Mike One, right? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. You're up now. Uh, High West makes a Campfire that has, it has, I don't know how to describe it. J- uh, Jonathan Howard turned me on to it. Okay. It's got a, uh, just a little of a smoky, almost a marshmallow, just a hint. It, it's is, uh, is Neil loud enough now? It's really good. Again, we're going to be here for a while, so we're just checking everything, making sure uh, that's all good. I, I guess I need to talk louder. That's is that what – well, it, okay, here's here's the deal to this. I'll give you a little inside baseball as we're starting. No, Carson's awake. Huh? Someone says oh, Carson's okay. asleep, but Carson's awake. All right, so, so what's happening is Neil is hooked up to a compressor to a, a system that's supposed to level these things out, but we're a cord short to getting me hooked up. So there's a little bit of a weird, uh, a little deal there. Um, seeing the lip syncs a little off. I, I don't know. I'm not going to go about that at the moment. I, I am, I'm, I'm well, your video feed is lagging. Your camera has been pretty good most of the time. Yeah. Was... Seeing Allie won't be calling in tonight. Oh, why not? He's upset now. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm leaving. I was here for Allie. That was it. We have normal latency hooked up. I can fix that a little bit, though, while we're talking, I think. I don't want to mess something up, but I think I can mess with that a little bit. Does Carson care about Ole Miss sports at all? Uh, He watched the fourth quarter of the game. Um, He watched watched some of the Arkansas game today because he has a sister at Arkansas, and they're horrible, and we just – after a while, we just kind of flipped something else. Um, He – he he's interested in Ole Miss sports. I, mean, I wouldn't call him a big. He, he likes uh, he liked Terrence Davis a lot the last couple of years. So he's pretty interested in the Raptors now that that TD is 
in Toronto, and and um, he wants to go see some basketball games this year because he that's that's his sport. He really loves he loves to watch basketball. It looks like I can't change the latency while we're talking, so it, it's going to be what it is. Okay. Because I don't think we're going to stop this and do it. I will, Here's next good- time, though, our internet's pretty good. Next time, I will switch that to the ultra low latency, which I see is supposed to help this. So, um, here's the good news. Anyway, there's yeah. no game next week. We'll have some time to experiment and get get some things down, Pat. And when we come back for the Auburn post game show, we should have some things ironed out. Okay, that's fair. You want to talk football now, or you want to do something else? Peyton says, "Do I like this better?" You know, it's funny. Peyton today was a r- weird feeling not to go to an Ole Miss game in Oxford. It, I've been on the beat now for eleven or twelve seasons, or whatever, and it was a weird, weird, weird feeling. I don't, I don't know that I like it better or, or worse. Um, I went for a while. Um, I got a uh, got a little color more than anything else. I was curious about some some alcohol lines. I was curious about some of that kind of thing. Um. It, the lines were apparently bad on the lower level. Anybody, anybody was at the game can tell me if I'm wrong here. It looks like a lot of people were going up top to the more, uh, the higher level, the upper concourse uh, in the grandstands to um, to get beer. To, to get beer, it looks like the lines were a little less. I saw several buddies that had gone up, come down when I was walking down to leave. I'd stop to talk to somebody for a second, and uh, they were coming down with a couple fists of it, and it looked like it was pretty easy to come back down with uh, with it in a timely manner. Um, did not hear of any crazy issues for the most part. Texas A&M's radio guys uh, were bringing beer in, so I'm assuming the press box would be valid with some alcohol. I did not, I did not try that. Um, I don't see why not. As long as you don't act like a fool, right? I mean, you know, come I mean, on, you handle a beer for God's sake. I mean, the National Football Writers Association of America probably wouldn't like it. They get really pissy about things like cheering and things along yeah, those lines. Yeah, but they don't enforce it. So, what difference does it make? Okay, so let's talk football. You sure. Yeah, I think at some point we probably should turn the page. There are some topics to get to. Um, Ole Miss loses tonight 24-17 to in a game that, quite frankly, the Rebels could have won and should have won, but they did not win, and they did it to themselves. And as I wrote in my column, which is up on the website, rebelgrove.com, part of the Rivals Network, uh, this is becoming a habit now. And I don't I don't think it's a good thing. I mean, I know it's not a good thing. It. it it is it is fast becoming a major problem for them. Yeah, look, let, let, let's keep it real. The path now to bowl eligibility requires beating state in a hell of an upset, as well as New Mexico State from this oh, point. Yeah, They're yeah. not as good as is is Auburn or obviously LSU. Um, and here's the deal: they've given games away. Ole Miss is losing winnable games. That that is the story of tonight. Texas A and M. It's not a great football team. Frankly, a team that played pretty poorly, gave Ole Miss so many opportunities, and Ole Miss can't get out of its own way. Ole Miss for probably the third time this season. You could argue fourth, but it would have taken a little better effort in in, in Columbia than, than necessarily I'm, – I'm, I'm not willing to say gave that one away. No, I'm not either. The other three I think gave away. Memphis, Cal, and now with, uh, with Texas A&M tonight. I think that's three games where – and a lack of an offensive identity, um, some puzzling game management stand, standpoints, uh, clock management issues. Those things gave games away, and this is the third time. This was a very, very winnable game for Ole Miss. It was a, it was, it was a game too that was such a swing, because no matter what, you win this one, you're going to go into the Egg Bowl with the chance for eligibility. You can really show a tangible step in progress. And look, I, from a talent standpoint, from the players on the field, this team is better. But at some point, it's about the scoreboard. It's about winning games because you can't use probation. You can't use NCAA stuff. You can't use all those things for excuses when you had the people on the field that can win the game. This game was blown tonight if you're Ole Miss, period. Yeah, it's what I wrote in my column a little bit. Uh, they've now lost four games. Uh, is that right, four? They've lost five. They've lost five games, so I've got to correct that in my column. Want me to go in and do that in a second? That's right. They're three and five now. What's going on in the baseball game, by the way? Somebody give me some chat on that one. I can find it real quick. Let's we can watch it too, I guess. But you want to watch baseball, or do you want to watch? Uh, uh, what's Alabama? our other choice? Uh, it's twenty twenty eight thirteen. My balls are trying to cover this thing. I've already hit a couple of those today. Let's see. Baseball's on. Four two is the score. I see. There it is. Bases loaded, apparently, though. Bases loaded for the Astros in the bottom of the eighth. Astros three outs away from going to the World Series. Um, 
look, they've, they've now lost five games. They've lost to one good team and four teams that are some variation of average. Are you off the Missouri bandwagon? Yeah. I mean, I watched some of their game tonight. No, actually, I watched a lot of the second half of their game today. They, they, they lost at Vanderbilt. Ooh, Avery's got a good question. I wonder, I wonder what Gabe's dealing with tonight. What's the Power of Mizzou board look like? I didn't. Know I might that. go over there in a minute. We might have a little fun, read some headlines on the power of Mizzou. We, we you know, misery loves company. Um, that's that, that that's uh that's one we might do here in a minute when we get started. Go ahead, finish. So they they, they lost to a Memphis team. That's it's good. They're they're fine. They're good, but they're not great. They're fine. They they lost to a Cal team that has now lost three games since it left Oxford, including losing today to Oregon State, who sucks. They lost to a Missouri team that uh, lost at Vanderbilt. And they lost to, and I know you can't do the law of transfers and stuff, but they, they've now lost to a Texas A&M team. I just got through watching them. They're not good. There's, did anything that you watched with Texas A&M today make you go, oh, wow, they're good? Nothing. They had some offensive speed. I like their wide receivers Yeah, but this okay. is the SEC. Everybody has offensive speed. Vanderbilt has speed guys at receiver. They had receivers that made plays today. That's, that's par for the course in the SEC. Did you watch anything at all with Texas A&M today that made you go, oh, boy, as a program, they're close? No, I thought Kellen Mond was incredibly average tonight. Yeah, it's fair. He ran over a couple dudes. It's the one time I ever went, oh. Okay. Yeah, he's fine. That was it. He's fine. Look, Ole Miss defensively played plenty well enough to win that football game. I've got this written down here. I mean, Mike McIntyre had – I mean, well, they, he didn't. He wasn't here. Ole Miss had one of the worst defenses in the country last year. They were somewhere between 120 and 130 in practically every dang category. This year, not so much. They're okay. They're, they're a top 60, top 75 defense. It's been a heck of a – it's been a jump. He's, he's getting a lot out of some young players. He He's stopping the run – and sacrificing the pass, but it's mm-hmm. the only way he can do it with the personnel he has, frankly. They've just got to get some better players. They've got to get more experience with some of their players. It is what it is. Offense is losing these games right now because there is zero identity. I don't know where you want to go next, but that's the next thing kind of on my mind. No, let's go there because let's let's talk play calling. Let's talk quarterbacks, game management, time management. All of those things are issues right now. Pick one. You can start. It's like a – Jeopardy category. Pick your. I want to. St- I mean, we're going to get a thousand questions about this. So I want to talk about this. I want to talk about quarterbacks because there's a lack of continuity. Here are the stats tonight for you. Yeah, for you sure. Go, there. go ahead. For Ole Miss, Matt Corral was 10 of 17, he threw for 124 yards, one interception. John Rice Plumley, four for 12, 31 yards, uh, no interceptions. Neither quarterback threw for a touchdown. Uh, rushing tonight, uh, Jerry Neely, who did not play in the second half, six carries, 80 yards, including a 69-yard touchdown. That was nice. Scotty Phillips, uh, 14 carries, 67 yards, a long of 38. Snoop Connor, five carries, 52 yards, and a touchdown, a long of 36. John Rice Plumley got contained tonight. I, I kept waiting for it to happen. Tonight was the night that it happened. A defensive coordinator put in a plan that said, we are not going to let him beat us with his feet, and he did not. 13 carries, 40 yards, a long of 16 yards. Tyler Knight had one carry for five yards. Matt Corral had four carries for five yards. And Dennis Jackson had one carry for three yards. Elijah Moore, uh, five catches for 59 yards. Dontario Drummond had two catches for 27 yards. Uh, Scotty Phillips, one catch for 22 yards. Snoop Connor, three catches for 22 yards. Octavius Cooley had a catch for 16 yards. Braylon Sanders had one catch for six yards. And Jason Pellerin had uh, one catch for three yards. Um, that's that's about it. Uh, Luke Logan was one for three kicking tonight. Uh, he made a 35-yarder. It was two for two on on extra points. Mac Brown six punts. Um, they don't give an average. He had a long of fifty six. He appears to have had a pretty good night. A and M missed a couple of kicks, and Ole Miss called a timeout or an extra point that they really could have used a minute later. Yeah, here's the, yeah, just blew a blew one for no reason. Kellen Mond tonight sixteen of twenty eight, one hundred seventy two yards, one touchdown. Some two people inter- are asking again what I'm drinking. Two interceptions. You're drinking Widow Jane twelve. It was I very know. good. I had a had a a little sip of it. It was it was excellent. Uh, Spiller had 16 carries for 78 yards tonight. Kellen Mond had 14 carries for 70 yards. The next leading carry was three rushes for 11 yards. Um, leading receiver for them, uh, Weidermeyer had 
four catches for 67 yards. Osba had five for 47. Listen, they, they didn't they didn't do much. I mean, just you know, team stats. I mean, here's the here's the totals. Ole Miss had more first downs, 22 to uh, over 20, 22 to 20. Ole Miss had 408 yards of offense. Texas A&M only had 338 yards of offense. Uh, Ole Miss passed for 155. A&M passed for 172. Ole Miss ran for 253. A&M ran for 166. A&M won the time of possession 33 minutes and 41 seconds to 25 minutes and 53 seconds. It's a game Ole Miss should have won. Statistically, it's a game that Ole Miss would have won. Frankly, it's a game that had it been better coached, Ole Miss would have won it. It's reality. Yeah, that that's the story of the night, period. It was it was a game where the third time. Chase, Chase is wearing a, a Rivals Camp Series uh, Under Armour pullover. These are defunct now because we're now uh, run by Adidas in those camps, but hey, yeah. it's okay. I don't have any Adidas garb, though, from Rivals. Do you? I've got one polo. Do you? Yeah. I think you had to go to something to get that. I went to Atlanta and got it. Worth the trip. It was fun. I'm going to open the phone lines in a minute. They're not open yet. Um, I might even just post the number right here on the screen. Um, so for, that's that's where we are. I mean, I cut you off, I guess. In yeah, a, but you did. I'm sorry. That's the conversation. So here's where we are. Here's where we are in a nutshell. The three and five. They're not going to a bowl game. They're not beating Auburn. This team's not beating Auburn in Auburn. And this team's not this team's not beating LSU. So are we in agreement? Yeah, no. I mean, I think that it, it, LSU is an unwinnable game, and it would take a really interesting, crazy effort to beat Auburn. Yeah, so unlikely. At, I mean, I, when you get some freshman quarterbacks, some weird crap happens. So, I mean, I, in theory, sure, Auburn is on the table, but – it would take them playing a hell of a lot better than they're playing right now. Fair enough. So yeah. if 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 we're going to do that, then we have to be willing to say that four and eight is on the table. And the question now is, what happens at four and eight? That's the question. Oh, you want to go straight to it? Yeah. You want to talk about I mean, quarterbacks? I, I, and, well, I mean, and, I, and, and scooping scores. I, I, we 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 can get to a lot of it over the course of the evening. I'll let people on the. Matt Luke's buyout is somewhere around it's six to seven million dollars. Yeah, something like that. It's 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 give or take sixty percent of the money remaining, which is give or take nine million. So do some math. Golden Goat is uh, I think you're confusing your coaches. Uh, Chad Morris's buyout is nine point eight million. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. That's why they really need Gus to make a deal. Yeah. But, you know, if you looked at their stadium today, you know that and, – and here's okay, here's where I want to go. We're just going to jump around. I hope that's okay with everybody. We're going to be here a while. It's 1050. What does the crowd look like for New Mexico State? Ole Miss has caught some breaks. Vanderbilt was at night. Texas A&M was is, at night. Is that before or after LSU? It's, it's before. Okay. So, they open date at Auburn, New Mexico State at home. LSU at home, open date, Mississippi State, State yeah, on yeah. Thanksgiving night. Yeah, yeah, sure. So they're sort of due an early game because they've gotten night games. Sure. So if either 11 o'clock or 3 o'clock, what's the attendance for New Mexico State coming off of an Auburn loss? A 3-6 and six Ole Miss team, what's the attendance for New Mexico State? Give me a, a number of bodies and seats. It's under 30,000. Okay, my opinion. I don't. I don't disagree. I think there's a chance it looks the most similar to what we saw earlier this season, and then that 2007 season where you had La Tech, where you had Northwestern State, where mm -hmm. you had some games where it was because everybody talks about the state game as the death knell for Orgeron. It wasn't. It was the Northwestern State game the, the the week before. There's no doubt about it. I can tell you that as someone who's covering the league as a whole, that that's factual. So if let's say it's twenty eight thousand people, just for kicks and giggles, whatever number you want to use, it's going to be a low number. Sure. And then they lose in Starkville. We, you and I, have heard independently of one another that this AD thing is going to move fast. Yeah, I don't believe the part. Well, I, I know Boyce has said multiple times that there's going to be commissions and committees and all this stuff. If he is, it's window dressing. 
just as it's ten fifty, and I'm just playing, keeping it real right now. I, I, I complete and utter utter window dressing. So, it, it's going to move. It's going to move as quickly as some decision makers would like it to move. So that's what that's what gets interesting. And listen, maybe you know, maybe that's not on the table. I don't know. I mean, people ask. I, you get that question. I've gotten that question a bunch of times tonight. You know, what's what's on the table? I, I don't know. It's there's no way to really say right now. I don't think Kermit can coach football, too. It's a thought. So they ask about John Hartwell. Let's go there. Is John Hartwell a candidate? I think he is. Does he want the job? He absolutely wants the job. Yeah, sure. He wants the job badly. He is lobbying for the job. He is campaigning for the job. Uh, as of late in the week, I'm not sure that he had heard from Ole Miss. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had not. There will be some issues that he will have to overcome. There is no doubt about that. The The – it is not a direct path. It is not a direct path at all. The the um, the circumstances which ultimately led to his departure will come up. Now he's done. A, he did a good. He job He got at a Troy. good gig. He's been. He's 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 had a very solid career. Did a good job at Troy. He's done a good job at Utah State. And done State. a hell of a job at Utah. He State. has. And so, it's fine. It's yeah. a fine hire. There's nothing wrong with it. But, and I, I but mean, they got to get past some stuff. I like John. I'm, I consider John a friend, but I, I don't. There's some stuff that they'll have to get past. And, and I have no idea who they're hiring for AD. Everybody keeps going, "Who are they hiring?" I, I don't know. No clue. Yeah, I, I mean Hartwell is the the most legitimate name that we considerably can put consistently consistently here that I put a lot of credence in. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Otherwise, it becomes a crapshoot. Where. And now look, AD hires, football coach hires to an extent, but AD hires especially, that's done by donors and boosters as much as it is a chancellor. It just is. There's a lot of purse strings involved with this. Without getting into the whole Glenn Boyce thing, because tonight I frankly don't feel like it, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm not really in the mood. Uh, Glenn Boyce doesn't know enough people to be doing the AD hire. He's going to hire who the people with the money tell him to hire. And then that person – has a decision to make with the input of those people who got him hired. And I don't know where that's going. I, Denver asked, who's the consultant on the AD hire? I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what, if they hire a search firm, if that's a search firm for window dressing, or if that's a search firm to truly conduct a national search. Here's the thing. Tonight's October the 19th. The season has... A month and six or seven days in it. I don't have my math in front of me. See, I don't think Hussey would take it. Uh, the, the, I think Hussey's the future SEC commissioner. I do too. I think I think for Charlie, taking the Ole Miss AD job or any AD job would be such a career gamble. It feels like he's going to be with the SEC unless he takes some smaller conference commissioner got job to then come back. Yeah, to almost go, hey, go get – go get some training, some on-the-job training in the Mountain West or something, and then come back to the SEC as the commissioner. He's, But I think, frankly, Hussey can just stay in Birmingham and and be the guy in 10 years. How's Charlie? He's in his mid to late 30s. Is that young? I just said a little older, but sure. Maybe it's early 40s. I mean, he, he could be the commissioner of the SEC in his early 50s. Which is young, man. Early 50s is super young. Uh, Ross was in the visiting AD box during the game. I talked to him before the game. Uh, yeah, I mean. I think an AD is hired mid-November, by, by mid-November. Well, if, if you're going Three to... Three to four weeks. If you're going to entertain... The evaluation process for a new AD, you've got to get it done by then. But the AD is going to come in within 10 days to decide on the football coach, hypothetically. Unless it's one of these deals that's already sort of done. It's just, you know, where the cynicism kicks in. I can't rule that out either. Could be already done. 
What's left this season, in your your opinion? We're gonna open the phone lines up in a minute. That a decision about the future. You got to figure this out. If if you're going forward, you've got to figure out a way to to sell it. And if you're not going forward, then you've got to get this right. Because you can't hypothetically. And listen, I'm I'm telling you, if 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 I knew that something was going to happen, I would tell you at this point. I don't I don't have any idea. I don't know what's going to happen. There's no way to know because I don't know who the decision makers are going to be. But if 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 you're going to make a change. You, you you better you better have your ducks in a row. This would not be a real good time to screw up a job search. And if you're going to stick with this staff, if that's the decision you're going to make moving forward, you've got to come up with a way to make it palatable. Did he just tie it up? He did. Oh, wow. DJ LeMahieu just tied up game six of the ALCS. He was a good college player. Yeah, he was a former Cub. The Cubs gave up on him, and that was not a good move. Two run bomb, four four, top of the ninth, one out. Here, yeah. Archie Breland just texted me, told me all the videos are up, so I'll load them here momentarily. Sure, why not? Yeah. Sorry, I got distracted by baseball there for a second, and I need to ask somebody a question. But I'll do it in a second. Okay. Yeah. You want to open up phones? Uh, sure. You can talk to somebody while I do that. Um, let's see. Let's you can put the number on the screen or what? What do you want to put it? Uh, yeah, you can put it wherever. The game, uh, someone's asking, the game is on FS1. If you have DirecTV, that's channel 219. If you do not have DirecTV, I don't know where to tell you. It's wherever you find FS1. All right, I'm putting the number up. Um, do me a little bit of a favor, if y'all would, although you probably won't, and just wait like two minutes, please. <laughs> I don't like the chat. So somebody called in before we even like we, we uh, were not on air. We had not hit the play button. My Skype was just open on my computer. I don't like your chances. And it started uh it started ringing. So yeah, I would really appreciate that though if you would just wait two uh two seconds. That would that would be awesome. I don't like your chances there at all. Okay, it's up on the screen. So um oh I guess I have to open Skype. I have not done that either. So hold on. All the kinks are not worked out, but it's it's, it's no. It's we're coming. we're gonna be fine. It's all it's all gonna be okay. We're gonna get it done. What quarterback would you play? I would play Matt Corral all the time. Yes. That took a while. You got ten seconds out of it. Okay. Now you're getting lots of calls. Oh God! All right, let's take one. Hold yep. on. All right, Neil, start talking to him while I do this. Welcome into hand raise, guys. Uh, who do we have? Bill, welcome into the show. How are you? I'm good. We can't hear Bill yet. I've got a, I've got, I've got a little bit of an issue here. Hold on. Oh, I hear Bill. You don't hear him? The people do not hear Bill. Oh, the people don't hear Bill. Okay, Bill, hang tight real, real quick. The All right, we should be able to hear, hear Bill now. All right, Bill, what you got? What I got is why do we kick a field goal right, right before half at 50 yards with no chance of making it, give them the ball and change momentum. It's a, it's a, it's a great question. It, it's uh, I just put up Matt Luke's post game. I don't know whether he addressed it or not. Obviously, we'll probably see it about the same time. Um, it's it's a good question. I don't know. I, I I thought there were a lot of questionable decisions tonight. I thought the play calling was 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 not very conducive to to having an offensive flow, I mean, and and then that decision. Along with burning a timeout with uh, after a touchdown before the PAT, probably potentially cost them three points. I mean, punt the ball, make them go the length of the field. Don't just give them momentum going into half. Yeah, I I agree completely. I think you punt the ball there, and you 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 don't let them have a short field to drive, and you don't give them momentum, and and you see if you can force an offense, and and A and M's offense struggled all night. See if you can force an offense to make a mistake deep in its own territory. No no, no doubt about that. 
Hey, turn down your device where you're just listening to us, because that way you won't have the delay. You got it. So how far do we go with this? Well, Wait, that, that's the that's the sixty four thousand dollar question, my friend. I mean, you're talking about coach. Yeah, it's exactly what he's talking. about. I know. About. Yeah, it's exactly what I'm talking. What about. What would you do, Bill? I don't think you can go forward with what we have. I know there are a lot of people that say that you know it's a young team, and you know that. But I think coaching plays into a young team also. And tonight, I thought it was one of the worst coach teams I'd seen. From discipline to running into the line or a 40-yard fade, that's all we ran. Nobody throws crossing routes. Nobody picks. Nobody – I mean, the defense, I thought, played well. They got tired at the end. No, I agree. They did. I, I thought the defense played really well. I think if you're grading tonight, you give the defense a B plus. I mean, they, they, they played really well. And if you're grading tonight, the offense, it's a – it's a bad grade. But the grade goes back to the head coach. The grade goes back to the head coach, okay? It does. Yeah. He's responsible for this, okay? And you have to be able to coach these kids and give them some kind of an attitude to win. But, you know, it was it was bad. Are you, uh, you going to go to the New Mexico State game or the LSU game? No. Nope. That's the question. I'm going to tell you, I was giving them a chance after tonight. I really was. I was giving them a chance before tonight. I was. I've been, I have not been a big fan of Luke because I think he's soft. I think he's cut cuff all over. Okay. But I gave him a chance. But he shows repeatedly poor coaching decisions. He shows repeatedly the inability to coach kids up. It's not enough just to recruit them. It's enough to change them over the four years to make a good player out of them. Who do you like for the AD, Bill? Well, I got you on the phone. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm just uh, – I've been around Ole Miss football for 60 years, and I don't, I'm not qualified for that question. But I know a bad coach when I see one, and this is not going the right way. Well, you're, I agree completely. It's not going the right way. I, I wrote that in my column that at some point here, really soon, that something has to something has to change. Something has to give. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. There's no, no doubt about it. Listen, if you're, you know, it's it's funny, and I don't say this because Campbell goes to Arkansas or whatever. I was just talking to people around the league and talking to people in the in that business. And we were talking about Arkansas earlier today. Okay, a couple of phone calls I had around 4 o'clock where they said it's the optics of it. At some point, the optics don't look right. Sure it is. Like if you're Tennessee tonight, the optics with, with Jeremy Pruitt don't look so bad. They beat Mississippi State last week, and, and they're, they're, they're losing to Alabama, and they're going to lose to Alabama, but they're throwing some punches tonight. They're, they're not lifeless. They, sure they are. They, they're competitive. Yeah. And, and they're so, a little competitive. And so if you're a Tennessee fan, you can go, okay, forget the fan. I don't, I don't, mean, that, I don't mean that a bad way, but if you're the decision makers at Tennessee, you can justify the, the concept of let's give this another year. Let's not, let's not abort. Let's, let's stick with this a, another minute. If you're the decision makers at Arkansas right now, the product on the field doesn't justify moving forward, and you know that, okay, we're going to have to change this. And frankly, if you're the decision makers at Ole Miss, whoever they might be at this point in time today, and, and up until tonight, I've been saying, hey, I, I still think that's the path to go. And, and, and I know logically it is the path to go. But it's harder to – after tonight, it's really hard to sell that. Look, the same thing happened after Ole Miss play in Alabama. Ole Miss was competitive. They were, okay? Yeah. But the further we go down the line, tonight was a bad A&M team. Agreed. Kelly Mond, they try to make a Heisman Trophy candidate out of, but he's not good at all. We gave it away again. You can't keep doing that as a head coach. And, and whatever they say about who gets hired, this whole thing, yes, it, it does – it is optics, but it's also money. And if nobody's in the seats and nobody's buying season tickets, where do you go? That's why tonight was big. 
in a lot of ways because a lot of people did show up tonight. They got a night game, the beer sales, all that stuff. And listen, every every school with the first, with the exception of LSU, for the first night of beer sales, they've they had to learn some things. I won't hold that against them, but no. you could go tonight and you could get beer and you, sure. could, you could get a White Claw or whatever the hell it is, and 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 Henry's, whatever, okay. and and you you could. It was a night game. The weather was good. It was a beautiful day in Oxford today. Uh, if anything, it was a little warm. It was a great night. You could, you could. S- tonight was a night you could build on. You could get some momentum. And if they win tonight, and they absolutely should have won tonight, if you win tonight, hey, you, the, the rest of the season is 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 worth looking at because you could get to a bowl game and at six and six if you get to go to the liberty bowl or the whatnot and play ucf or tulsa or somebody you you can sell that that's not where we are tonight this is this is not a team that's going to auburn and winning this is not a team that's beating lsu and and that means seven losses and at at, at a minimum and and listen mississippi state threw some punches with lsu for a while today that will not be a gimme game by any stretch, and if you, no, if this team goes, I thought four, going in. If this team goes four and eight, I thought going tough. in. Tough. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. no, go ahead, Bill. Go ahead, Bill. I thought going into the LSU State game today that LSU would blow them out. I did, but when you but when you watch the State game, State was competitive. If they play like that against us in Starkville, we're not going to be competitive with them. Maybe defensive wise but not offensive. No, there has to be more of an identity offensively. There's no doubt about that. So, I mean, my gosh. I mean, yeah, offense is, is, is just not good. Bill, thanks for the call. Uh, not so, good. Thank you so much for taking my call, guys. I really absolutely. appreciate it. You know, OM Rebel Josh mentions uh, Harson at Boise State. It's, it's my understanding that – Brian Harson is interested in an SEC job. Yes, I, Harson Harson is not an automatic not jump to a, to an SEC job. There's no doubt. Right. So there's there's a connection there, but we'll we'll yeah, we'll, yeah. For, for 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 another day. It's not 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 today. All right, you want to go back? Let's, let's take one. All right, hold on. Good grief! All right, you got to talk to him for a okay. second. Keep all right. Hello, caller. Welcome into Hand Raise, guys. You're on with uh, Anthony Parham and myself. Welcome into the show. How are you? I'm good. Who's this? Hey, Derek. What are you drinking tonight? I had a nice uh, had a nice Coors Light in there in the bar. That was that was a, that was a nice uh, nice deal. Yeah how uh, how were the lines? Uh, how was the how was the you know the the, the, the tap in the Rockies? The whole deal. Ta- ta- take me through it. It, it was actually very uh, very efficient, better than I thought it would be. I got there about an hour before kickoff, and there wasn't a line at all. Uh, but but when I came back up, I was sitting in the uh, top row of section E, and and, and and their lines were really good. I mean, it, obviously during timeouts, but I thought it was pretty efficient process. I think that they, they you know, obviously first games got a lot of uh, got a lot of things to work through, but um, overall, I thought first game exceeded my expectations. What about the actual game? Well, um, I wanted y'all's thoughts just on the. I mean, we talked about the offensive, just lack of an identity. Uh, I've talked with some other friends, and we've talked about some different concepts that we don't seem to be doing on offense. You know, we talked a lot about first down, you know, running it in the uh, – just, just running it between the tackles. Uh, but, you know, we, we're still not getting Cooley enough touches, I don't think. Before uh, – you know, before tonight, we really weren't getting Ely out on the edge. We're not doing anything like – you, you you rarely see anything down the field, tight end wise. Well, you're not uh, you mean, down the middle of the field. Yeah, I mean, look, not to cut you off there, but you're you're not getting anything in the middle of the field. No. Period. The middle of the field is absent for Ole Miss right now. It, it is it's inside run, inside run, throw it deep with a go route, and then hope for the best, and maybe you get a pass interference penalty. Ole Miss is not doing anything whatsoever in the middle of the field 
which is the way to kind of sustain drives and get some rhythm. There's no rhythm. There's no. Th- th- there's nothing to sort of get anybody into any type of coherent rhythm right now. They're banking and especially on a- with Corral, which he's not playing anyway. But yeah. if They're- you're playing Corral, he's a definitely a rhythm guy. They're yes. doing nothing in the middle of the football field. The middle of the football field is absent for Ole Miss, and that's zero way to score points or win football games, especially against SEC front sevens that can stack the box and take quarterback runaway when you're not creative with it. It's one thing – Give to A&M, use it. Give A&M but, credit tonight. Uh, yeah, their yeah, their yeah. defense said you, you're not – Plumley is not beating us with his feet all night long. That They, they walked into Oxford and said that is if, – if you guys are going to beat us, fair enough. But that's not the way you're going to do it. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I, I really like Plumley's running ability. Um, but, but he's still got, I mean, such a long way to go throwing the ball. He's not I mean, even on the, the play where he fumbled, yeah, I agree. Um, we tried to get cute with the two quarterback stuff, yeah. which, I mean, I, I get it, but. It's fine as a gimmick. It's fine as a gimmick. It just, I mean, not to interrupt you, stay on, because I'm going I'm to I'm let you talk. I just, it, it's it's the quarterback thing has bothered me for weeks, and I. And, and, Frankly, we get pushback about it because people like John Rice Plumley, and and I do too. He he's a great kid, and he busts his ass out there, and all that stuff. He's a hell of a runner, and he can help the football team. But he no doubt he can't throw in the middle of the field. He can't stretch the field vertically with with throwing through windows, and so everything is is deep ball or sprint to his right and throw a little quick out kind of a pattern that. And listen, this is a this is a league where. Everybody, everybody watches film. Everybody studies. Everybody knows what's coming, and now people are game planning for him, and they're taking that stuff away. And then the other kid, Corral, is a kid who very clearly needs. If he's going to be your quarterback, and I'm not saying he should be or shouldn't be, but if he is going to be your quarterback, you've got to let him try to get into a rhythm. That's when he's effective. Yeah, I, I agree with y'all there. I, I mean, the only thing that we're really doing down the field uh, is throwing the fade route in the passing game. I mean, that's that's eighty percent of it. And it, with with Plumlee, you're exactly right. The game plan they came in, they were running a lot of spies. They were running so much at him, and they they, they took him away. They took his running ability away and said, if you're gonna if you're gonna beat us, you're gonna be have to have to have an elite arm. Yep. You have to you're gonna have to show some sort of creativity uh, throwing the ball. And of course, you know we had a few plays there, which I didn't agree that the um, I, I didn't agree that the two balls to Sanders were inconclusive. I I, I, I didn't see it in, during the game. It felt like it wasn't inconclusive uh, to overturn it. But I mean, again, those are fade routes. That those are just you know we 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 liked all last year about all Longo did was throw the deep ball. But I mean that's that's the gist of our passing game this year with Rich Rod, and it, it's frustrating because I feel like there is talent there to develop, but it, it just feels like we're just being so generic. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where you really go from here. Thanks for the call. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank y'all. Anything there? You want to go right back? Uh, it was a good call. Let's go to the next one. All right, here we go. Give me a second. Hold on one uh, second while you're we're putting you in. I still have not figured out JG's uh, way to just automatically do this. I have to do it manually every time, so I don't know. Who we got on the line? Who's with us? Hey, Chase. This is Bubba. How y'all doing? Hey, I'm doing lovely. How are you? Man, I tell you what, after watching that game, my man, old Rich Rod, he's nuttering the squirrel turd. Uh, uh, looking at him in the coach's box, he looked like the engine wasn't running. wonder what y'all think of that. Were you uh were, were you sold on him when the hire was made? What soured you on it? Kind of kind of what's uh what's been the progression there? I don't know, man. I don't know if I was soured on him or not. I mean, you know, you got to sit back and get. You know, he's trying, but hell, I was. He's more qualified than that chance that we got. Well, he's been. I mean, he has I mean, been a Power been Five a, head coach before. <laughs> I mean, he, he yeah. you know, yeah. been at Michigan. <laughs> Well, I don't know. That's I mean, it's not Holmes, but it's fine. I don't, I don't. <laughs> it's not well, you know. <laughs> well, he probably coached there, too. But anyway, I, I mean, Hellfire dogs run out. You know, it's just been a bad night. I'm sitting here drinking shine. But 
that Blumler boy looks like, I mean, he can run like he stole something, you know. I, I think that's, we need to ride or die on that boy. I, I think Jose Altuve. Just, Jose Altuve just sent the Houston Astros to the World Series. Wow! Walk off, off two outs, bottom of the night, and the pitcher's kind of laughing. That's, that's off of Raldis one. Chapman, your boy. Yeah, my former, my former boy. What a night in Houston! So, what would you do at quarterback, Bubba? Mm, I'd ride that Plumley boy like, like a girl on prom night. I ain't gonna lie to you, boys. I mean, that's just, just you know, just doing it. I mean, hell, I ain't, I ain't been this mad since I found out my third young and wasn't mine. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate yeah. the call. Thanks. Anyway. All right. Thanks. Y'all have a good night. Right. You too. Oh, gosh. I guess, let's, let's head right back in, see where we get next. Uh, we haven't, nobody's gotten shot tonight yet, so I'm a little disappointed as we're getting started Give here. Give it time. Uh, one second, caller. Hold on. I've got stuff going on. All right, who we got? Yeah, Robert. Robert, how are you? Better than I deserve. How are you, fellas? What are you drinking tonight, Robert? Uh, I've been sipping on some cheap Coors Light here and trying to fight through the night. Where, uh, where, where, where are you? Where, where are you at? Where are you from? So I'm in Dallas, Texas. Um, you know, used to have season tickets. I'm gonna drive over. Um, I would work a full day Friday and drive in and get get to Oxford about one o'clock and just had to give up on it. Um, it's, I'm, I'm hoping that we're at a point where we can agree that, and it's, you know, I don't think it's Matt Luke's fault. I really don't. If, if somebody offered me the head coaching job at Ole Miss, I would probably take it for two and a half or $3 million a year. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if we can, yeah, hopefully we can finally say after three years that this is an experiment that is just, it's just not working. It's, 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 it's not fair to, to him or to the program or to the players. And it's, it's, it's frustrating. I, I told you going into this week that for whatever reason, I felt like this was a really big game. And I, I've, I've, I've kind of pushed that to the side all season when people said Memphis was most must win or Arkansas was a must win or Cal was a must win. Well, this was a must win because of the other losses. Yeah. I mean, if you want, had Ole, had Ole Miss beaten Cal and beaten Memphis tonight, wouldn't have been a must win. The the tenor would have been completely different. Instead, this, barring a crazy upset, they're five and seven or four and eight at this point for the season, and that is what it is. And yes, it it mean, call it what you want, they're better, but you've got to win games that you're losing because of of, of game management. Right now, they're losing games because of game management. Yeah, they're giving away. Yeah, they're giving away games. Well, it's, it's, it's game, man. it's clock management, it's game management, it's play calling, it's it's a lot of stuff that, to be honest, it's really not fair to the kids. I mean, those kids are playing hard. I know everybody said the defense has played well all year, which they have. Um, but, you know, when I can tell you from 500 miles away what play is coming, and, and I didn't yeah. play football beyond high school, yeah. I mean, it's it's I'm, I'm sure the A&M staff has some pretty good coaches on their side, you know. One who's won a national championship, and I'm sure their assistants are probably more qualified than I am. I was literally predicting plays watching on the television screen, and that's not a good sign. Exactly. That's that's. I mean, and I mean that sincerely. It's it. If if I sitting there in my living room with Chase and and my wife in the room can and your dog and my, and my dogs, and I can predict the play call, that's not a good sign. That that means you're not creative enough. It. And when Plumlee's in the game, you, you kind of know what's coming. And I'm not picking on the kid. You just kind of know what's coming. And Corral's not in there enough. So, guys? Someone said, you know, when was the last time Corral had a touchdown? Yeah, but when was the last time Corral was really given an opportunity to just go a, a few series and see what happens? Memphis. I mean, that's... Cal. Yeah, the answer is the first three quarters of the Cal game. Yeah. So guys, what what happens now with no AD? I mean, is 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 there an infrastructure in place that can that can start vetting legitimate candidates for the head coach, What's or a, does, does, a good does the AD a have question. to have to come first? Oh, okay, so let's take this logically for a minute from the perspective of because this is the perspective that nobody ever does, right? Let's say you're just call him 
Johnny Jones potential head coaching candidate and you're an up and coming coach and you've got a guy like Sexton as your agent. It's either Sexton or it's Russ Campbell. It's it's somebody who who is very, very good. Yeah, as one of agent. the top three or four, whatever. And you know that, you know, this is an SEC gig, but you're probably gonna have opportunities again in a year. These are confident people. You do want to know who your AD is. You do want to know what is the infrastructure at the program that you're inheriting. If you're if you're going to take over the Ole Miss program, who are you working for? Who are you working with every day? Who is who are the people that that you're answering to? Who are the people that you're calling when you have an issue? Those kind of things. And if you can't get those answers, that's problematic. Now, is it the end of the world? Not necessarily, because for some people, I mean, you know, put enough money on the table, they'll say, "How to f it? To hell with it! I'll, I'll do it." But no, ideally, you'd you'd certainly you'd certainly like to know who it is that you're working for, who it is that you're working with, and if you can't have those answers, those that becomes a, a little bit of a red flag. So, do you have to, with you know the word "have" underlined, italicized? Do you have to have an AD in place? No, but you need to. So if I understand y'all's y'all's comments earlier, the the thought is the AD position gets filled pretty quickly within the next three weeks in time for a decision to be made um, regarding the head coach and 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 a potential candidates to know who they would be working for and with. Right? I think that's more likely than not likely. I agree. Yeah, I do. Okay. Thank you. Very for good. Call. Appreciate Thank it. Yes. Uh huh. I'm gonna get this one. Uh, well, it's not the one I meant to get. But hold on one second, caller. Let me type you in. There's a there was a call from Amory coming in over and over and over again. And I was yeah, trying, I, was, I think I, I, was I think that's who you it. think it is. Is it really? He's trying to call. I'm, I'm I'm trying, but it did not work. But hold on one second, caller, and we'll just tell him hold on until I say essentially because I got like ten calls coming in at once, and I just hit the wrong button. So anyway, caller, who we have? Hi, this is Andrew. Andrew, how are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Good. Where are you? Uh, where are you calling from? Uh, I am in Madison. Oh, okay. Got you. No, no one getting shot, in Madison, as opposed to the Jackson one last week. Uh, I mean, you, know, you never know. I guess. I mean, bullets can travel far. I mean, I, I mean, they might throw some bricks, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, you know, you, get, you gotta work with what you have. I suppose. Okay. What's uh? So what, I, what's on your mind tonight? So I guess the question is, all right, realistically, can Ole Miss make it to an SEC championship game? In your opinion, is that possible? Sure. Well, yeah, you were one lateral away in 2015. So I guess so. realistically then, if, if your goal is to make it to an SEC championship game, is the current coaching staff, do you realistically think they can take you there? Based on what I've seen with this I, staff I, so far, no. So, okay, then you basically now, have to- now let me let me interrupt you for a minute. If you're going sure. to do that, you then have to you do have to if you're going to be objective about this. If you're going to, you know, put put emotion aside and look at it objectively, you do at that point have to say, okay, what did they inherit? How long have they been there? What have they dealt with? Are they making progression? All of those things. It is more complicated than just the here and now. That's that's exactly right. No, uh, and you know, if you wouldn't have seen this pattern over and over, because eventually you're going to have to beat teams with more talent. Than you. So, what does that entail? I mean, you're going to have to be a little smarter in your coaching strategies, your in-game coaching, and things like that. Based on the evidence that we've seen so far, I, I just don't realistically think that. That's, I mean, it, sure, it'll probably improve, but how much is it going to improve? I just don't think it's there. So I guess the the choice then is the can you find a candidate who you truly believe can get you into an SEC championship game? Um, I mean, I guess there's no point to fire Matt Luke if you don't have a candidate lined up that you you know think you can take you there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, you can't just. <laughs> continue on and let the crowd dwindle either so i mean they're in a tough position i understand but yeah it's uh i don't know i mean 
I don't think it's realistic to say we want to be national champions every year. But at the same time, I do think, you know, one SEC title or at least a championship game uh, since the 60s, I, I just think, you know, that's something the bar a little low, especially when, you know, the, the only other teams that haven't made it to the game is what, Kentucky and Vanderbilt? I, I don't know. That, to me, should probably be the goal, but, you know, what do I know? No, it's fair. I mean, you're you're in the league. You're in the division. I mean, that that that, that is 100 percent completely fair. You have to you have to maximize your opportunities. And look, Ole Miss is not at that point. They're still rebuilding from the the NCAA thing from the standpoint of Atlanta, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, 15 was not maximizing the opportunity. 14 potentially was not maximizing the opportunity. You beat Alabama both those seasons, 2003. I mean, there have been chances, and they just haven't made it happen. I mean, frankly, 2000. I mean, this this is not fair because this team was not in a mindset for it. But 2008, even so, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I don't uh, know. No, I, I mean, I get it, and I'm not saying that you know the goal obviously next year or two years from now, you know, should be there. And, and look, uh, you know, I I don't dislike Matt Luke. I mean, everything everybody says seems to be positive. It has nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with Matt Luke as a person, but. As a coach, I, I know some go the whole he's you know a two year coach or whatever. But as far as in game experience, actually coaching as a head coach, you know you know he's been doing this since 2017. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it might have been interim, but he should have been gaining some experience as far as clock management, game management, decisions, things like that. Those or what I've been looking for improvement on. I've publicly, uh, that's fair. I, I yeah. have publicly said that I think his his uh, circle is too small, and I think it's too it's too intimate, and it's not. Uh, he he needs to grow more as a as a coach. Yeah, and he's running out of time. Yeah, appreciate the call. Thank you. Hey, hey thanks, guys. I appreciate. It. And, and and listen, some people talk about interims and stuff. I mean, there's no point in doing the interim thing this year. Interim interim deals don't work. They're not great ideas. Well, yeah, there's no reason to do that whatsoever. No, no, I mean, that's, no, a, that's a that's that's a rest. Hold on a minute. Hold <laughs> on. I finally got the number I was trying to. Yeah, that's true. You do not tell Coach O to hold on. Congratulations on the big win in Starkville, uh, Ed. Another another big win for you. Go Tigers. Did I have you on? I thought I had you on. Hold on, you're not. It's, hey, not, oh, it's not coming through. He's on. No, not not on the thing. He's not. Oh, he's not. I'm, I've got the controls over here. Do you want to argue? No, I do not want to argue. You want to take over? We no. can switch seats. I, I mean, that would be fascinating. But there you go. You're on now. Go ahead. Ed Orgeron on, on the on the program. Ed, how are you? Go Tigers. Good win for you guys tonight today in Starkville. Go, go Tigers. Uh, I ain't, I don't have a lot to say about Ole Miss. Uh, they 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 played hard, but but that's about all I can say about them. Uh, what the, have have we have we figured out the quarterback dispute? We have not figured out the quarterback dispute, Ed. There is no Joe Burrow on the uh, on the Ole Miss campus right now, best we can tell. And uh, you know what? The, the, there's a, there's an old expression that I don't know if that made it to South Lafouche High School or not. But if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any. That stuck around for a reason. Well, I had three at Ole Miss, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's accurate or not. <laughs> Your accent disappeared there for a minute, there, uh, Ed. Well, I'm trying. I'm, I've, I've had a little Tito's tonight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Did you, did you know that Hatley scored fourteen, seventeen points on Knoxville County? Well, they didn't win though, right? No, but they scored seventeen points. Hey, that's good. That's an improvement. Score Knoxville County. I'm not gonna tell you. Have they, I don't think they've ever won a playoff game. Have they ever won a playoff game? Has Hatley been to the playoffs? Yes, a couple times. Oh. Uh, go Tigers. Who was your favorite quarterback at, when you were at Ole Miss, Ed? Uh, Zach Stout. Well, he was not there when you were, but good, <laughs> good, good, good shot, though. I'm impressed. 
I would have thought it would have been Brent Schaefer. Did he play for me? I, hell, I can't remember. Yeah, and he did not play for you. He played Bur- for Houston Nut. You had Brent Schaefer, Seth Adams, Michael Spurlock. Oh, Brent, Brent Schaefer, Brent Schaefer. Yeah, good, good, <laughs> good, uh, good old man forever. You recruited <laughs> Jevin Sneed, though, too. I mean, just getting a chance to coach him. I called him Javon, but yeah, <laughs> I, I did. I did recruit Jevin. Jevin was a good player. Me and Dan recruited him. Dan won him. Uh, go Tigers! Go Tigers. Uh, good, good, good guy. Good guy. Uh, what y'all? What y'all? Y'all watch my game today? I uh, I did watch some of your game today, y'all, y'all. You guys have a very good quarterback. You have good receivers. You have an offensive system that makes sense. And uh, to your credit, you've left. You've stayed out of it, and you have allowed the uh, the offensive coordinator to call games and to call plays, and and it's working out for you. Well, well, Coach, I tell them where the damn stadium's at, and we get there, and then we either go for it on fourth or not, and that's my call. That's the only two things I do. There's uh, there's something. Just keep uh, doing what you do, buddy. There's something to be said for that, Ed. I think you've got a chance to win the whole thing if you'll just stick with that. Hey, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Appreciate the call. Uh-huh. Got Ed calling in. We got Bubba calling in. Get a lot of stuff. I'm trying to try to get a couple that's been just tearing up the phone line there for a second, kind of waiting on them to uh, to come in. Not as many quarterback questions, a little more just overall program stuff tonight, it seems like. I think the quarterback thing became a little self-evident tonight. You think it played out tonight? I do. But, I mean, well, okay, seriously, we'll get to calls in a second. Did it? Plumlee's still playing late in the game. I mean, there, there, there is no, no – Well, let me say this. Yeah, yeah. Define self evident because to the people who are watching from home or in the stadium. Okay. I think for the coaching staff, there's this insistence on trying to force this thing. I I really believe what I told you a, a week ago, two weeks ago. I mean, we talked about it right here. It wasn't a se- it wasn't a secret. I think Matt Luke sees a lot of his brother in John Rice Plumley, and I think that is. You think cl- that is playing a role in this? I have no. It's way, just us talking. I have no way. Us to, and whomever's listen. I have no way to prove that, but yes. He plays hard. He runs hard. He puts his shoulder down. He gives you everything he's got. South Mississippi kid. All I, I think there's a lot there, and I don't mean any of that derisively. I just is what it is. Look, that's a huge part of this. They have to figure out the way to best use John Rice to win football games. And Denver Reb makes a great point. I'm going to go to this call while it's coming in because it's been going here for yeah, a while. Hang, 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 hang with this caller. We're punching you up. Denver Reb makes a great point. Matt Luke doesn't have a say in which quarterback is playing. He goes, let's be real, LBR. Rich is con- it, Look, Rich is more comfortable with Plumlee because he runs better. My opinion, I don't know right, wrong, and different. Well, that is my opinion. You could be right. I can't argue that either. It, I think it fits what he would like to do better, and he's not as comfortable with a Corral who's more of a pro-style guy, go back, throw the football. And frankly, here's the thing, too. Corral's not making great decisions, so not as much on somebody who's not making great decisions while throwing the football, too. Caller, who is, uh, who, who's with us? Hi, this is uh, One Trick Pony. All right. Where are you calling from? Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call uh, from Greenwood. Okay. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my call. I really enjoy all y'all shows. Um, I was just uh, wanting to know what y'all thought about the possibility of uh, Kim Key Dent coming into the game. Because um, he's from a good family, and uh, I, I really know a lot about his family, and it's a really good family. I was just wondering if uh, y'all had any thoughts about that. <laughs> uh, I think the better question is why has Grant Tisdale not played again? That's the better question. No, he seems like a good kid, too, but I just wanted to know if y'all knew anything about Kincaid. Um, just that he has a good family. I, I, yeah. I, he had a con- no, I know that. He had a concussion in August, and I, I, I don't know. I haven't I haven't heard a lot of scuttle about him. I, I think the interesting thing is what happens with – I don't know. There's a lot of interesting things. We're approaching that point in the season where there's a hell of a lot of interesting things. Um, I don't know. Kincaid had performed pretty well as he got hurt in the ball. He did. I hadn't heard his name much since at all, then, at all, frankly. really. But you know, and I've heard different things about. Uh, I thought I thought it was for out Kincaid. Sorry. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to also ask you, Chase. Um, 
uh, I've really been enjoying Bourbon South, and I really appreciate all the time you put into that. But I just wanted to ask you, um, is Cast Iron Table going to be coming back? Um, no, that's been dead for a while. That's content. been uh, – yeah, that's <laughs> been gone for uh, about four years now, yeah. something like that. Um, dead and buried. You know, uh, we uh, – The family's not even mourning that anymore. We, we, we try a lot of things. Some work, some uh, flounder. That was uh, – that was more of the the floundering variety, yeah. but I appreciate it. That's it. That's, that's good. Well, yeah. I mean, from a podcast standpoint, it was really good. So I just wanted to uh, ask about that and see if it was coming back. Um, and uh, one more thing, I was going to ask you, um, Neil, uh, why do you hate Cal Mayo? I don't. Oh. I don't know him. Therefore, I I couldn't uh, okay. I couldn't possibly hate him. I, I honestly, I don't know that I've ever seen him before. I don't, I don't know what he looks like. I wouldn't uh, know him if he walked in the in the room. Oh, okay. Well, so I, I just remember I on the podcast recently, you you seemed like you were down on him as a chancellor candidate, and I just wondered if yeah. there was maybe um, no, a, it's a, a reason. Oh no, why. it's a simple thing. Is I, I don't think uh, I don't think he would be a potential candidate at any of the other thirteen SEC schools. It's one of the uh, reasons. Okay. That, it's one of the reasons I don't think Boyce is a. I think Boyce is a risky hire. I think Glenn Boyce, the the exact same resume, would have a very difficult time getting any of the other chancellor gigs around the league. I think you should hire people who would be able to – you know, it's kind of like in football, right? You want your quarterback to be a guy that could have been the quarterback at nine or ten of the other SEC schools. You don't want to take a quarterback who couldn't have been a quarterback at any of the other SEC schools. The odds are that won't work. I think the same holds true for ADs, for chancellors, for lots of things. Yeah, well, I'm just hoping Boyce gets uh, chip pickering in there, and they really kind of get the university on the right track. So, okay. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for the call. Yeah. Well, thank you. you got anything on that? It, it's. I didn't know you hated anybody as a person there. I, I don't know him as it a seemed person. Seemed a little extreme. Yeah, I don't. I don't know him. Jeffrey's trying to call, he says. Oh, he is? Yeah, that's, I what, I was see his that's what I was trying to tell you. Oh, I don't have his number up on my screen. Okay. If you're calling, call. I didn't mean that rudely. I'm just... I have an open phone line. You punching somebody up? Well, I was waiting on him if he's calling oh, right okay. now. okay. Is he calling from his number? Because it's not popping that's, up. That's what he said. I mean, I'm go ahead and go ahead and grab somebody. See me go ahead and get somebody. I think you should. Are you getting tired of it going in your ear? It's a lot of ringing. Is that what it is? It's a lot of rings. All right, we'll grab. Hold on. Silence, finally. <laughs> you guys are really missing out that you can't hear all the ringing because it is extreme. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Who, who we got on the horn? This is Lance, Golden Goat. Hey, Lance, how are you? Man, I love it, dude. I, I, I wanted to – I loved the call earlier, the dude asking about uh, can Ole Miss ever actually get to an SEC championship game? And I don't think we can in the current environment, not necessarily with coaching, and and all that, but the, you know the league seems to have changed so much, and there's a lot of crappy in four football years. going on in it right now. What do you think? Well, crappy football is good for trying to get to Atlanta. The more bad teams, the fewer teams. Well, you if have to there's four, yet four teams though, I mean three or four teams. I mean, you, I'm just it just looks in the so SEC West. It's what it's been. You beat Alabama and you beat LSU. Yeah, A and M's bad. So you do think? Yeah, bad. I mean, Arkansas's I, I, bad. I State's game, going like, man, down. That, somebody could have put a dagger in Jimbo today. You know. Oh, I think I mean, it that, that was, look, we had look, every I, chance. Yeah, no, look, a loss to Ole Miss today would have made next year quite uncomfortable for Jimbo and Ross. The SEC West sucks. It's two good teams and, and, and Auburn's okay. And everybody else is like a different version of shitty. But do you think we can actually recruit at that level without having the NCAA yeah. you know, on campus? Yeah, or I mean, you think I mean, we can? I mean, I mean, I mean that's yes. an honest question. Yes, not to get into the whole freeze thing, but if freeze would have yeah. just if Freeze would have just shut up, <laughs> they would have been fine. That's what I kind of think. But is that? I mean, you know, I'm an outsider. You guys get to see it all. 
uh, I've had the opportunity to get to you know, visit with coaches and all that, and they, they all love the place and think you can recruit here. But, you know, you guys believe you yeah. can recruit at the level yes. where you can take on the, the, the powers that be yes. and get a seat so here's my, if you just here, don't fuck it up. So, here's, but, you know, basically. here's my answer. Can you compete every year for the SEC championship at Ole Miss? No. I don't think you can. Can you compete for the SEC championship at Ole Miss – uh, on a given year, absolutely. Ole Miss should be a perennial eight-win program. That's what it should be. It should be a program that wins eight games a year. And when you win eight games a year, that means is there going to be the season that you go five and seven, six and six because injuries or whatnot? Yeah, sure, of course. Is there going to be the year that a couple of breaks fall your way and you go 10 and two, 11 and one? Absolutely. And in those years, those are the years that a play here or a play there determine whether you go to the the Cotton Bowl or whether you go to something bigger. That's that's what the that's what the program should be. That's what the program. Do you think this this crew can do it? I mean, I, I'm asking an honest question because up till tonight, like you, you know, my direction seemed to be pointing in the way that I'm going. Yeah, you know, I'm going to keep giving them a chance. I see some things and I feel so, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like. You know, the rug gets pulled out from under you. Do you think the infrastructure is in place for recruiting and personnel and all that to actually get to the eight-win plateau that you know, I know, and hopefully every fan starts seeing as the baseline for success? From Can a, we do it with what we from got? From a recruiting standpoint, yeah, I do. I, I think they're recruiting really well. From an in-game management standpoint, from a making decisions in the heat of the moment that makes sense, I'm starting to have real questions. I mean, if I'm being honest, I, I mean, I, so, you know, I mean, look, it's, it's like a lot of, it's like a lot of life decisions. This is not cut and dry. This is not simple. And whoever makes this decision one way or the other, whether it is to retain and give it more time or whether it is to, to make a change, it's going to take some guts. It's going to take some, some, uh, other things that you know are synonymous with guts, and and then you, and then you're going to have to stick with it, and then and then look. Here's reality, and I've always been consistent about this. The moment that you make a decision as it pertains to a coach, that moment you turn the page. the 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 next guy comes in, and you can do all of the blame the previous administration for a while, but at some point, it's on you and. As much as it's fun for me to criticize Hugh Freeze, at this point, the, 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 the blame inside the program on a night like tonight has nothing to do with Hugh Freeze. It has nothing to do with Ross Bjork. It has nothing to do with anybody who was here before. This, 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 this loss is on Matt Luke. It's on Rich Rodriguez. It's, it's on the current staff in totality. And I haven't seen Matt's comments because I've been talking to you guys and talking to Chase, but there's there's You're a lot more fun you know there's only there's only yeah, I'll, I'll, i can read their stuff later <laughs> there's only so many times that you can say hey you know we just have to work hard and get better before that's not enough and it's one yeah, thing the coach speak you know get better mondays i mean that doesn't keep working you know you gotta this games like this you gotta win one at some point so, and you so, think you've been so close so to your point i mean look you know when you go to alabama and lose it's alabama nobody nobody's winning there when you play LSU right now and you lose, that's okay. I mean, they're beating everybody. Texas A&M's not a good team. Missouri's not a particularly good team. California's not a particularly good team. And Memphis was infinitely and, and Memphis is whatever. Memphis is okay. They're all right. They're okay. When, but when you and, and it's okay to lose one of those games. It may be even okay to lose two of those games. But when you lose all of those games, it becomes an issue. Isn't that what you've done too? For hey, what's what we've seen for the interim year? And you, you know, I talked to the staff during the interim year. They were, I mean, I remember talking to Freddie Roach, and he was absolutely pissed. And he said, "You know, we should have won nine games this year." Fans don't see that, but we do. And you know, I looked at that. I don't know, we went six and six, and you go five and seven. And you know, you could have had a couple games on the table last year. You counted three out of four that we could have taken. Where does the bleeding stop? Is it with experience, and you just keep riding this thing, and they get better, or do you have to make some type of changes holistically within the system, the program? I and mean, where do you go from here? I think I call our asset. Where do you go within the quarterback system, within the, the run mentality, without the pass? Where do you go? Because the defense seems to be developing. I don't know. 
I don't That's know. a great answer. I mean, I'm the same way. I'm kind of like, I'm, geez, I mean, I don't know what to say about it other than that, you know, I, I enjoy the input all these folks give and the questions, and it, it is hilarious to, to see. But at the same time, we're all fans, you know, it, it, some more than others that want to see them do well. And, you know, I appreciate you guys taking the calls because it does open up a forum. And uh, thanks, you know, and Bubba was a trick. I've got to get that guy back on again. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Yeah. We appreciate I'm gonna it. Let y'all get, I'm going to let y'all get back to it, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate, appreciate it, Lance. Good to see you. BYU punching Boise State right now, 28 to 10. Well, it shines off Brian Harson. Remove him. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'd still probably be interested. Would you really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because uh, he's won. <sighs> hey, caller, turn your, uh, turn your device down a little bit. And welcome into the show. How are you? Yeah. Okay, hang on. So we've got you on the big screen. So okay. sorry for oh. being fans of the program. There he you is. Know, sorry. That is the uh, the illustrious uh, Jeffrey Wright, host of uh, Jeffrey and Gennato. Is it Gennato and Jeffrey? I think it should Giannato be Gennato and Je- it's Gennato and Jeffrey. Was that Je- alphabetical I mean, or was that salary you- based? Jeffrey and Gennato. Uh, it wasn't salary based. It was based on name recognition. And uh, turns out, uh, if you're the EP of the biggest sports writer in uh, Memphis, apparently that doesn't get you a whole lot. All right. You're- so are you like celebrating the Tigers' big win today? You've been out on Bill. <laughs> like, what, 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 what's what's going on? Uh, well, I mean, at the time, yeah, I was celebrating. I was celebrating the Tigers' big win, but it wasn't because of the reason that apparently the message board thinks I was. Um, I was celebrating the Tigers' big win because it made no sense to me why they were favored. And on top of that, the, all the money was coming in on Tulane, and I was like, this makes no sense. So I took Washington and I took Memphis, and I split. And I won Memphis, but I lost Washington. So here's to me. All right. Y- you – you study quarterback play. All jokes aside, you watch a lot of quarterback play. If if you if you were made the Ole Miss offensive coordinator for the re- remainder of the season, what would you do with the quarterbacks? Oh God, pray. When you finish I mean, playing, I, what would I, you I, do? I, I, no, no, real real quick though, that's actually interesting because everybody seems to have a favorite. The answer is that neither one of them yeah. are doing a decent enough job to actually win the job. No, sure. I, uh, okay, thank y'all. Like. I, I've worked with both of you. I consider both of you my friends, and I don't think that y'all think that I come in with some type of agenda when it comes to figuring out, you know, uh, what I believe or, or what I promote or lack thereof. I didn't promote Baker Mayfield because I thought Baker, uh, you know, looked like me and, and and talked like me. But like, no, like, but when it comes to Ole Miss's quarterback play. It's a legitimate problem because you have one kid that is clearly a significantly better thrower. The problem is he's not a great quarterback, and that is, of course, Corral. And then on top of that, you've got a kid that is – he's certainly a matchup problem in Plumlee. But, I mean, guys, how many – I mean, y'all are there. How many wide-open throws did he miss tonight? I counted five. I mean, I watched on television. Um, I don't know a bunch. He, he's look his his passing game right now today. And that doesn't mean that he can't develop something, but at, at, as of today, his passing game is roll to the right and throw to the sideline or throw the fade. That's it. Okay, so Chase, yep. Aunt Chase, yep. I I I talked I talked to um, my contact who has a mutual contact uh, with your contact and. Oh, hold on. What's okay? Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Go ahead. So let's go. Ba- let's go. Let's go baseball. So I talked to my dad, um, and <laughs> my dad, my dad did some digging, and I trust my dad. I really do on this one. Like I know when my dad's like like spoon feeding me, and I know when my dad is actually like curious. Apparently, John Rice Plumley, with legitimate radar guns, threw ninety two off the mound last year. Because I don't, I do not see that with his arm, with a football, and I don't think throwing a football necessarily is the exact same thing as throwing a baseball. But there's a big difference between a kid that can throw 92 and a kid that throws the football like John Rice does. Because 
Like he guys, he's, he's missing like simple, easy throws. And it's not from, it's not from like a fundamental perspective. It's not from some type of, of poor technique. Like I, I don't, I don't know what it is. So I actually think he has a mental block when it comes to throwing the football. And I think that's something to consider going forward because as, as bad as it can look with Corral at times, I still think he's probably your best answer. So do you think the lack of the middle of the field, the intermediate game, is that because of either Plumlee not being able to drive the football, Corral's decision-making, or is that strictly a play-calling screw-up right now? Where, where, where do you see it? Because, I mean, we mentioned this earlier in the show, there's nothing in the middle of the field to sustain drives and get into a rhythm right now. Hey, Carly. Well, I don't think it's the same. Hey, Carly, babe. Um, there's, I think there was a, I think there was literally a light that flashed and that's exactly what happened. Um, I think it's, I think it's a multifaceted answer for Corral. I think it's a coverage recognition problem and he really, really struggles reading coverage. And in, in fairness to him, maybe he doesn't struggle reading coverage. Maybe he thinks he sees a look and he decides that he locks on a guy and he's like, I want this guy to go up on this matchup. And I'm, fully willing to accept that but the problem is he consistently he consistently looks in the wrong direction in my opinion like I I can watch football for 13 hours here and I'm not saying I go you know I'm not saying I bat a thousand on reading coverage but I can bat 800 and so is it a situation where he locks on a guy in a matchup that he thinks works and that causes problems? Or is it a situation where he literally looks at the defense and he has no idea what he's looking for? I can't answer that. Um, with Plumlee, it's, it's one of two things in my opinion. And I can, I can definitely relate to one of the two of them. Um, and laugh, laugh all you want. John Rice is short and Oftentimes, John Rice bails on the pocket because John Rice can't actually see, from my opinion. Like, I think he bails right trying to find a throwing lane, and then when he actually finds a throwing lane, it's either panic time or it's, uh, it's looking for whatever's the closest available option. And I think that's what I'm watching. I don't think it's... I don't think it's a scheme thing. Like when I watch the Ole Miss's scheme, I don't sit there and go, "This scheme's terrible." I did watch Ole Miss's scheme for four years and think this scheme's terrible, but I don't watch that with Rich Rodriguez, and that's not like some type of personal vendetta against you, Freeze. I'm I legitimately don't see a scheme problem when I watch Ole Miss. I do watch a decision makers problem. Yeah. Last thing uh, with you, what's the uh, your opinion? Matt, Matt, Matt in trouble. Yeah. What, what would you do? I, I make you the AD tomorrow. What are you? What are you evaluating? What are you looking at? What would you do? I do not even blink. I'm keeping Matt Luke, and I'm keeping Matt Luke for one important reason. If you fire Matt Luke right now, you completely waste the signing class. So that means, based on what I've seen on the field, that means you'll have a decent class from last year you'll have a class from the year before that has mm, y'all y'all can clarify but i think roughly what five players maybe that might contribute it's insufficient at best okay and then if i fire him now i'm gonna do the exact same thing that i just did and that i'm gonna be restarting it's gonna be a rebuild and I think the mistake that so many fans make is they think we're not winning on the field, so it's time for a change. And I'm not saying that Matt Luke is some type, some type of genius, but the evidence suggests from the numbers that I've run that he's basically on a 12 game season, he's half a win under what the average should be. So if I have to choose between winning half of a game versus that next recruiting class, I'm taking that next recruiting class 10 times out of 10. It's not even a question for me because next year he's going to fire himself, in my opinion. That's what's interesting is I don't have it in front of me. 
You think I'd memorize it by now? The schedule. They open with it's Baylor, and then a gimme game, and then it's Alabama, Auburn, LSU. It's Alabama, LSU, Auburn, yeah, whatever. and then it's a somebody, and then it's Florida. Yeah. And so there's a real chance. I mean, you're right. There's a real chance that there could be five losses by mid-November, mid October. Yeah, mid October. Yeah. Yeah, and the schedule's a little easier at the end. It's a lot easier at the end, but regardless. That All right, hang, hang on. That, so, so I've got I do this I do this. Um, I have a spreadsheet that essentially runs uh, totals of wins and losses, and then I have uh, uh, I have a multiplier. So essentially, hang with me here. Sure. Throughout the course of Ole Miss football, the the program average. If you were playing a twelve game season, the program ag- averages six and a half wins. Does that make sense? <laughs> So, like, back to 1893? Back to literally since they've started playing football. Yeah, 1893. And the, right. They averaged six and a half wins. Okay? Since 1992, which is when Arkansas the division, Carolina, whatever, when the SEC, the yeah, when the SEC expanded and they were ha- able to have this, the SEC championship game, the school averages 6.2 wins. Since the founding of the BCS, the school averages 6.2 wins. Since 2012, which is when the league expanded again, the the school averaged 6.6 wins. So that includes freezes, good and bad. Since 1984, which is when the Supreme Court ruled that not just basically the same three teams could play on TV each and every year, the school averages 6.2 wins in a 12-game season. Matt Luke is averaging 5.6 wins on a 12-game schedule. So, in my opinion, he is, yes, he's clearly a game worse. And I do think that that is something to be considered. But, in my opinion, to act like that, if you if you had some different coach, and I've run the numbers, 80% of coaches end up falling within no, no more over a five-year average, no more or less, than a one-game average of whatever the school's average is, essentially since 1992. Here's the question, though. So, Matt, L- here's the question: How good does the recruiting All class right. have to be for this to be relevant? Because at the end of the day, if you're recruiting a class that's I'm not saying Matt is, I'm just making a point though. If it's between 20 and 35 in the nation, you're not making up any ground anyway. So, okay, what difference but, does it make? Okay, well, that that that's actually, in my opinion, that's a that's a false narrative because the game completely changed two years ago. And the game completely changed two years ago when they moved the calendar up. And because they moved the calendar up, if you end up making a change right now, forget this class. Like, it's done. It's over. Everyone's going to come and get anyone that anyone wants. And it has created a situation in which if you fire a guy now, you lose this class. In my opinion, you lose the next class because you're starting so far behind. And then your best hope is to maybe have a good class in the the what would be the signing class of 2022. And so, it, can I play devil's advocate really for the fun that, of it? Sure. Okay. Cause Go I, for it. Because I'm curious. Because if I'm sitting at home and I'm Steve Ole Miss fan, I'm sure. asking, okay, well, what if I what if I get Brian Harson or what if I get Pete Golding or what if I get whatever flavor of the month it is to come in and, and he takes the job quickly and puts together a, a, a an attractive staff quickly and it looks like, you know. There's no evidence to suggest that, though. No, I, I get that. No, I, Believe me, I understand that part of it. I'm just asking. That's what, that's what Steve Ole Miss fan is asking. Well, what if, what if we got that guy? What difference would that make? Would that make a difference? Okay, so let's play out both scenarios. Let's say they go and get Brian Harson. Okay. All right, Brian Harson has done a good job at Boise State, but he has done no better than what the average of Boise State has been ever since the Boise State job essentially Chris became Peterson. relevant with Dan Hawkins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Dan Sorry. Hawkins. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right. So Brian Harson is essentially – here's what I fundamentally he's, he's believe. He's been a maintainer. I fundamentally believe that every school has an average win total. And if you, if you look at it through the course of time, more or less, 
a average season is going to be X amount of wins. And if you want to go through it, I can. All right, let's do it. Let's start with let's start with Alabama. If Alabama were playing a 12 game season since let's start since 1992, the average season for Alabama is nine and two, or I'm sorry, nine three. And obviously with Nick Saban, it's completely different. Nick Saban's average win season is ten and a half and one and a half. Yeah. So essentially, he's an eleven and one coach. Yep. I think I think the numbers back that up. Would we all agree? Yes. Sure. All right. Let's look at Arkansas. Since 1992, Arkansas is a 6.2 and a 5.8 program. Woo pig. Does anyone have, does anyone have a problem arguing that? I feel like the average coach, if he has an average season at Arkansas, does he not win six games? That's about right. Okay, Auburn. Since 1992, eight. it is an 8.1. Yeah, eight and four, and it's a 3.9 an job. It's an eight and four program. Yep. Okay. And what does Gus Malzahn do on average? Eight and four. And Gus Malzahn to me is the perfect example of what is the average. And that's about eight and four. Ed Orgeron is Orger- Orger- the best example in this, right? Because he, he struggled at Ole Miss. Yes. Now, now he, he did a lot of growing up and maturing, and he had to be humbled and all of that stuff. But he's now at a program where it's easier to win, and he's winning at a high level. Perfect example. The LSU job since 1992 has been an 8.2 win job and a 3.8 win loss. And Les Miles basically got fired for going 8-4. and four. That's what Les Miles did. Okay, but you always – okay. Let me, I, I, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate, and I'm kind of arguing for, sure. the, for the sake of a, of a show, and I'm kind of arguing because there's a little part of me that disagrees mm. with you, okay? All right, go for it. The eye test – you, you talk about the eye test a lot, and, and I agree with you when you sure. do it. They're not passing the eye test right now. Are they not? Because no. I actually think they are passing no. the eye see, test. Tonight, no, t- okay, tonight, see, tonight, oh, tonight oh, they did. I disagree. I think they look so much better. I think they, compared to last year, y'all think they look, y'all think they look better last year. Defensively, they do. Year. Yeah, I was with you until the last eight days. At Missouri, and then tonight against Texas A&M, I felt like they beat themselves, and I, I don't. If 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 I'm the guy, no, okay, so okay, okay, I'll play devil's advocate. If I I'm never the guy, felt like they beat themselves tonight. So here's here's what I felt like, and this is this is someone who watched every snap of the game. I felt like they played harder, and I felt like Texas A&M had more talent, and then in the end, I felt like Texas A&M made more plays. Oh, I don't think there's any question that that Matt Luke gets kids to play hard for him. There's no doubt about that. Matt Luke, now for going on three seasons, his teams do not quit on him. Period. That, I 1,000% agree. And that is absolutely worth noting. It's not platitudinal. It's real. I, he's there, there's, But there's a game management portion of, of it that, that he's not improving on. There's a uh, right, but I, I agreed with you that he's a below average coach. The average coach at Ole Miss will win six; he wins five. My argument is that I'm taking the long term perspective. I understand, and that I actually think this roster is so bad that I think you have to give him another year just to make the roster better because I think he's going to fire himself next year. I. Guys, uh, we're all on the same page. Yeah, I don't think Matt Luke is the answer. We're speaking in, but, no, no, I, I, I mean, listen. Like I said, logically, I agree with you because you look at the schedule. I pulled it up, Chase and Jeffrey. It's it's Baylor in Houston. Baylor did they win today? They did. They came back and beat Oklahoma State. They're seven and zero. They're undefeated. Southeast. Thanks for reminding me, Chase. Appreciate that. Yeah, You're sorry. a good friend. Southeast Missouri at, at at home. That's a win. So one and. It's it's hard for me to sit here right now and go, oh, Baylor's a W. Based on what? And then they get Auburn at home. I mean, I don't know. Okay, but my my answer to that would be okay, so your your recommendations were go get Pete Golding or go get uh, who's the other name he threw out? I'm, I'm not Brian I'm not Brian Harsin. And, just, and what you're gonna say Brian is that Harsin. those guys don't win that game either. And and that's that's valid. Exactly. That's va- very valid. They go to LSU. Uh, probably a loss. They get Alabama at home. It's the premier program in the country. It's probably a loss. They go to Vanderbilt. Hell, I don't know. Probably a win, but crazier things. They get Florida at home. Dan Mullen's building a hell of a program there. He just is. 
Uh, Middle Tennessee at home's a win. Uh, open date at. Wait, wait, wait. Can, go back to go back to that previous statement you made. Which Florida. One? Dan Mullen's building it building a hell of a program. Yeah. Um, remember when I told everyone that that guy was a good football coach? You did. It's because I watched what he did. Yeah, they're, they're really good. He doesn't good. have a ton of talent. No, they're really good. That, so when I look at the Florida game at home, based on what I see today, I go, that's an L. Middle Tennessee's a W, open date, at Texas A&M, uh, uh, at Arkansas, should be a W, but hell, who knows. They, they, Georgia Southern at home should be a W. It, it is a W, and they get Mississippi State at home, and hell, who the hell knows. I mean, it's it's like you said, it's 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 probably a schedule where, so it really comes down to the finances of it all, and then just the fan sure. the fan base portion of it all. If you don't make a change, a year from now, when you're making that change, you've had time to think about it. You've had an AD in place for a year, all that stuff. You better hit a damn home run because you have really. If next season goes the way that. Me looking at it, I think it's probably going to go. You, you, man, you better do, do an Altuve walk-off sort of a deal. I mean, you, you better do something dramatic and and sure. sp- special that people remember, Jeffrey. Or otherwise, it, it people are pissed. Yeah, and right. And I would make two arguments. Number one, I think the worst thing that you can do is a situation that Ole Miss did the last time that it had it rolling, which was. They hired a head coach before they hired an athletic director because they had a situation in which the athletic director and the head football coach were never on the same page. And it created so many problems for that university. And I would argue if you're going to go hire Pete Golding, you better be convinced that it's more than just him being a Mississippi kid that married an Ole Miss girl and uh, they look good and they can – they can sell the program because the truth is, saving defensive assistance, they don't have a great track record. And for everyone that goes, well, Kirby Smart, Kirby Smart, well, Kirby Smart's not doing anything that Mark Rick didn't do. And so if, if you want to do that, by all means, be my guest. But what I'm telling you is that the average coach that you're going to hire, it's not going to be a whole lot different. And if you make this change now, you are going to create a roster problem, and that person is going to be facing the same questions in two years that Matt Luke is facing today. If you are looking at it in terms of how are you trying to make the Ole Miss football program better, if that's your job, if your job is whoever's in charge of making the football decision, if you're trying to figure out the way to make the Ole Miss football program better, you bite the bullet, you take the, the low attendance next year and you make sure that your roster is better because the truth is Matt Luke's firing himself next year. And I like Matt. I do. I think he's a good guy. And I think Matt, I think Matt actually has a good plan, but Matt's clearly not uh, an above average coach. And when we just go through the schedule as Neil did, it doesn't matter who's coaching the team next year. It's a bunch of L's. But I'm setting up that roster to where the next guy that takes over, that next guy is going to do exactly what Freeze did. And Houston Nutt, yeah, he had his flaws. We all know them. That roster was not nearly as bad as Hugh Freeze claimed it was. But when you hire a new coach, it's the age-old adage. They're going to always downplay how good the roster is they're going to make expectations low. Fans are going to buy in because every fan wants to buy in. If Matt Luke were, if Matt Luke had, well, say I guess if he were five and two right now, everyone would be bought in. Yeah, no, no, no. If you set expectations low enough, and that next coach comes in and he exceeds expectations, you're going to have a chance to actually build a brand. And so I'm taking the long-term view of I'm trying to make the roster as good as possible so that I know I'm going to have to make a change. Like, uh, if I'm the athletic director right now, I know for a fact Matt Luke's not my guy. But I'm not so much concerned about trying to find the right guy because the truth is 80% of coaches are average, and they're just going to do whatever the job is. So what I'm trying to do is set that person up in the best possible position so that I can capitalize 
when that person exceeds expectations, which he will lower by definition. That's what coaches do. And I'm going to try and build upon that. Yeah. Thanks, it's interesting. For, Appreciate thanks it, for the bud. call, my man. All right. The recruiting class is good. That's where it is. It's good. It's good. It's got a chance to be really good. I mean, I think good is the word probably for it right now. It's good. It, I mean, it, it's got to get better. There's got certain guys. I mean, we all know the names. You get you, you're going to get there, but it's it's. I just think that there's a certain boundary there where if you can't recruit that type of class, the holding on is 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 foolhardy. Yeah, something along those lines. So, who do we have, caller? We got Jefferson here. How are you? Good. How are y'all doing? Good. What'd you think tonight? Yeah, I guess the main question uh, for me is: I think this year is kind of over, right? So, kind of moving the page. I, 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 the biggest question I have is about the impact of the recruiting class going forward. You know, on the the on the field results, whether or not we think that at a certain point, like it's going to have a negative impact on the recruiting going forward. I don't mean tonight in general, nothing, but from a season standpoint, I mean it's a lot. It's not as severe as 2012, but you would like to see some tangible progress. Um, look, wins and losses, it, it, it's kind of odd, but that's not the number one thing for recruiting class, positively or negatively. However, there just needs to be some sort of movement. There has to be some sort of positive momentum where guys go, "Hey, it's getting better," and I'm the guy that can make them take this step or that step or whatever. And it's just it feels very bogged down right now, in my opinion. What would you do? Yeah, I guess I'm I'm, I'm sorry to cut in. I'm, I'm kind of no, going back to I remember y'all talking on the podcast before about the 2012 class and how if they didn't potentially get to the six wins and maybe they lost some of those higher end recruits. And I, I, I you know I've obviously been listening to y'all's podcast talking about how this you know the on field results this year shouldn't impact the recruiting class at all. I guess I'm just trying to figure out at what point. Is it bad enough where some of these folks say, hey, maybe I look elsewhere? Well, that's kind of what Jeffrey was saying. This is this is the gamble, right? Is that what the kids see, and a lot of times fans don't like hearing this because they think it's a it's a slap at fandom, and it's not. I swear to God, it's not. It what the kids see is they're playing a lot of young guys. That's really attractive to kids. And the kids say, if I had been out there, we would have won that game. Or they would have won that game. And so the kids don't really get hung up on the results as much. So the gamble that you take is that if you make a big change that results in sweeping change on the coaching staff, now the kid who was going to go to your school because of the relationships that he had built with staff now he takes a look around because, listen, other schools are still recruiting these guys, and so they have relationships with other staffs too. All of a sudden, the the staff at State U or South Carolina or wherever, now that becomes the prevalent staff in his mind that he makes a decision and he switches is that you run the risk of completely uh, of complete upheaval where you basically sacrifice a year. It's a complicated deal, and... I get both sides of it. I really do. I, it's it's why you, you need to have an AD in place who is connected. You need to have an AD. And in, knows the direction. Knows exactly what they're looking for. Knows the, all boys jokes aside, the profile of what is required <laughs> for this job. No, seriously, though. Yeah. I mean, of, hey, I need experience. I need this. I need that. I need this type of connection. I need this type of personality. I, I need all those things. You got to know that and go. Glenn Boyce has coached. He has some experience. He did. I Can't, mean, Canton Academy. That Canton up. Academy defense was something else, man. They stopped that wing T, shut it down. No, I don't know. Look, you're right. You could make at least eighty seven thousand dollars. <laughs> You better have it. <laughs> you know, he could take the head coaching job for 87000 and that would change the... The, sh- the financial structure of, would, the, of the program. <laughs> you, you have yeah, to... Yeah, I guess, um, you know, again, not to belabor the point, but at a certain point, what y'all are basically saying is, you know, you, you, come, you come to the point of the decision where you've got to either cut your losses 
and yes. restart and basically sacrifice one class and then move forward, or you work with mediocrity and say, hey, this is good enough for me because I need this class. You know, I mean, I, I hate to be the person who makes that decision, but ultimately we don't have the AD in place to do that right now. Uh, I just, you know, it's, it, it seems like status quo for Ole Miss just to accept mediocrity and say, hey, I don't want to lose this recruiting class this year because it's going to be tough to recover from, but I'm just going to accept mediocrity for the next, you know, two, three, four years going forward. Well, here's the thing. It's a great point. Here's the thing. There's a couple of games left. And the fans get an opportunity, and this isn't me trying to organize some revolt. I swear I'm not. But the fans get an opportunity through their attendance or lack thereof to make a statement. And if you don't show up, what that says is, I don't accept this. I don't accept it. You, you do get an opportunity as a fan to make a statement. But we're still talking about those attendance games that I'm, you know, mentioned earlier, 10, 12 years later, whatever it is. Yeah. So, you know, those, those are opportunities for fans to say something. One way or the that's other. the feeling you have either way tonight. Ole Miss turned out. There were a lot of fans there. Students stayed. I, I saw pictures that a friend sent me from the fourth quarter fans still in, in I mean, students still in the attendance. Now a beer helped, but that's nonetheless, fine. they were there. It's fine. Yeah. I don't care what helped. Sure. It's all good. Sure. I mean, there's places. To- Last question. I'll leave y'all with and I'll hang up and let y'all get to, uh, more funny uh, callers tonight. I ain't one. Uh, hey, Neil, do you think that uh, uh, or, uh, what's his name, uh, David Ross, can be a better coach than he is a dancer? Um, yeah, I, I think the Cubs are going to do something soon. I think it's interesting that they haven't done anything yet because uh, I think one of the people they're really interested in is Joe Espada, who's the bench coach for the Houston Astros. And now the Astros are in the World Series. And I think it's telling that the Cubs haven't done anything yet. Um, there are some rumors that uh, the Cubs wanted to talk to uh, Josh Bard, who was on the Yankee staff. And the Yankee season is now over. And so it's possible that that's who the Cubs want to talk to. Um, it, 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 I mean, I'm, I know I'm a Cubs fan, so I'm biased. But it's one of the more attractive jobs out there because of the market and the the – the fandom and all that stuff. And uh, they've got a big decision to make and they're doing the right thing by being deliberate and making it. I, I think David Ross makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. And then I also think he's risky in a lot of ways. I think Joe Espada of the, of the Astros for a number of reasons makes a ton of sense. My nose is shy. Well, thanks guys for taking more questions. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, y'all have a good night. All I right. can't do the mama accent. So I'll just hang okay. up. All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. We'll go right back to uh, the phone line. Hold on one second, caller. Let me get you set in on the show. Still not getting completely uh, quick with this. Is it bad that I told my brother, who's an Astros fan, he was at the game tonight. He lives in Houston. He was at the game tonight. I said, hey, I, I want you to get me a hat. And he still hasn't sent me a hat. Why? I don't know. I mean, I said, get me a se- size seven and a half, low profile preferably, and send me an Astros hat. And he still hasn't. I, frankly, it's offensive. Who's on the phone with us? Uh, this is Franklin. What's up, Franklin? Uh, I'm doing good. Are you still drinking? Are you, Mississippi here. Are you still question? Are you um, still, hold, hold on, Franklin. Hold on, hold on. We'll get there. Are you still drinking? Or is, I mean, it's twelve twenty a.m. Are you still drinking? Yeah, I got rid of the whiskey and the tequila. Um, now it's just pounding natural lights, trying to get on the line. Natty lights, got you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, forget tonight's game. Okay. Um, I've been with three the whole time about keeping Matt Luke going forward, but it, speaking of the recruiting class, how much influence does Tyler Siski have there? Is there a chance to save it later in the season if we made a change late in November, or if we got an AD that could make a change? Uh So you're asking if you if you made a change and you kept Siski, could you keep the class together? Yeah, I mean, how much influence does he have there? Because it seems like since he's been on board, you know, the evaluations have been better. Yeah, I, look, they have a plan, and Tyler's a big part of that plan. Um, I mean, if you were to make a wholesale change, 
I don't know whether a new coach would come in and, and keep him or not or, or whether he would be amenable to staying. Uh, those are all those are all questions that I mean look, here's the thing when, when you make change, this isn't even related to Ole Miss, this is just in general. when you make change there's there's risk reward. Um, there's risk and there's potential reward. You, you can, you can conduct a search that goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Think Tennessee when they ended up with Jeremy Pruitt, where you, you got turned down a bunch and people used your job as leverage and, and, uh, the AD had a meltdown and all of those things, all of those things could happen. Or the, there's the potential that, that you have a, a, an easy search where you, you target one person and you get him and he takes the job and, and there's instant momentum. Um, I mean, when you decide to make a decision, all of those things are on the table. Yeah. I mean, I understand that. I, I, I'm kind of been on that board the whole time with you cannot, you cannot get rid of this recruiting class we got now, because obviously you can see from the class we got now, there's talent there. It's just, it just seems like the coaching is not bringing them up. But uh, outside of Ole Miss, um, and going to NBA, because somebody mentioned the Cubs earlier, so I'll bring up the NBA. Okay. John Morant's looked pretty good in, in uh, Memphis. Yeah, he's and, been awesome. um, Yeah, and the front office seems to be actually be doing something good there now. What do you think about the Grizzlies moving forward? Uh, if I were them, I'd I'd want to have one more bad season, get one more high draft pick, and um, add a third element to uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. and John Morant, and then start going from there. The West is loaded. I mean, you're, you're, if you're a Grizzlies fan, you're you're not competing this season. Um, so I'd kind of want to see them lose a lot of close games with some exciting young players and, and build on that nucleus and then go from there. Yeah, it's been great to – actually wake up every morning and see that the Grizzlies front office actually did something that's worth uh, celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. I love Morant. Um, I, think, I think Morant's going to be a great player. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for taking my call guys. I appreciate it. I've never been more involved with Ole Miss. Usually it was just, um, Hey, we won or lost, but ever since I've been a member of Rebel Grove, it's you've, you brought me into more space. Now I get, feels like now I get angry more knowing what <laughs> y'all know or in the background, but, <laughs> Thanks for taking yeah, my call. So, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. I have to have a lot of water. I'm hydrating. I'm, you are hydrating more than I am. I am. Well, again, you you don't have to leave. <laughs> That's true. I have to find my way out of here one way or the other here in <laughs> here in an amount of time. So yeah, I'm, I'm 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 trying to not Uber is the point. So that's the goal. Who, who's with us, caller? This is Jeremy. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. Uh, how are you? Where are you calling really? from? Really. I wanted to really call in and you know, yell about some stuff earlier just because of predictability and everything to play calling. But after like sobering up pretty much because I've ran out of alcohol. Well, what do um, you what would you run out of? Real, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What would you run out of? I had, I've had about a third of a bottle of Elijah Craig single barrel. Okay. Okay. Where are the other where are the other two thirds of the bottle? Oh yeah, well it's, it's, it was it was already open bottle, uh, so. Uh, that's just what I had left. So you didn't have a plan bottle well. of gambling jack and two beers. No, I did not. No, I did okay. not. Well, not that's what happens when you don't plan well. Things go squirrely. Mm. Well, I end up with just a few beers, and that's, that's it. Now I'm just totally out. So. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when you don't plan well, yeah, I mean, let that be a lesson moving forward. You have to plan better. I didn't expect. I didn't expect y'all must want me to drink that much. So. <laughs> So what's on your mind? Well, really, after listening out for a little bit, don't just really all come back to, you know, with how the program is set right now with Ole Miss making unqualified hires and the hiring of Matt Luke and kind of what they've done over the past few years, even go back to Freeze. I mean, it worked out for a few years, but he was a Mississippi guy and kind of made a, a little bit of unqualified hire. I want to all just kind of come back to that all around. Well, look, overall – there's no doubt that there is a there is a mentality, there is a way that things have been happening that Ole Miss has had leadership issues for a long time in different spots. There, yeah, there's, there's there's no doubt about that. There's been a certain nature of this overwhelming thought 
that if you do not intimately understand Ole Miss, you can't have a serious spot in the administration and the coaching staff and to some extent in some places. Yeah, it's 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 becoming asinine because it's what Neil said with, 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 with Boyce or Calmeo or anybody. Nothing personal with any of these people. It's that you want to hire someone in all these spots that most of the other SEC schools would hire too. That's the bar. It's not. It, it's not that high of a damn bar. It j- j- just hire people, and this is not even about about Luke. This is bigger than that. Hire people that other people would hire as well. Get into the game. You're in the SEC, and at some point, it's kind of important to act like it. All the way around. Well, y- there's a hundred and twenty million dollar athletic budget. You're in the SEC West. So yes. the, the people that you compete against, it's Alabama, Auburn, LSU, Texas A and M, yes. Arkansas, and. Mississippi State. Thanks. Yeah. That's who you compete against. Thank you. And so when you're hiring people that none of those other schools would hire, you're either smarter than them or something's wrong. And you've got to operate at really good efficiency because while you've got a lot of money, you don't have as much money as a lot of them. You have to operate at – I mean, it's what it's what's the amazing thing. I mean, we've, told, we've said this so many times. Freeze taught Ole Miss that it can win big because, frankly, the staff wasn't great in some areas. It wasn't the most efficient staff in the world, it was an and yet they staff. were a fumble from getting to the SEC West or getting from the SEC title, it, title game. It was an average staff. Yes, Freeze taught Ole Miss you can win. You just have to get out of your own way to do it. I've been asked to tell a little Johnny joke. A what? A little Johnny joke. Any little Johnny joke? I've got, I've got one pretty good one. You want me to tell a little Johnny? You joke? You have a little Johnny joke. Yeah. So little Johnny's got a, a train track, one of those train sets. Sure. Where he's got a lever, and you push the lever down, and the train goes, and you pull the lever up, and the train stops. Okay? So, little Johnny's at his train set, and he pushes the lever down, and the train goes, chugga 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 and he pulls the pulls it up, and he says, stop number one. Is it going to be bad if I say just kind of bad words? I think we've already uh, okay. I, I think we've already shot our wad at this point. He says, "Stop number one, all you sons of bitches getting on, get on. All you sons of bitches getting off, get off." Well, little Johnny's mom is in the other room and she's listening to little Johnny, and she hears him, and she comes into the room, and she, well, she actually she says to herself, "I'm going to make sure that I heard what I thought I heard," and so she goes and she listens. And so little Johnny pushes it down and chugga 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 pulls it back up. Stop number two. All you sons of bitches getting on, get on. All you sons of bitches getting off, get off. Well, now she knows what she heard. She comes into the room, she picks him up by the ear, and she says, Little Johnny, I told you not to talk like that. You go stand in the corner for 30 minutes and think about what you said. So he does. He stands in the corner for 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, she comes in and she says, Little Johnny, did you think about what I talk, what we talked about? And he says, um, yes, ma'am. And so she goes, okay, well, you can play with your trains again. And she goes back into the kitchen. and he Is this a joke or can Empire stand up back? Hang on. He sits down He sits down at his uh, at his train track and he pushes it down. Chugga, 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 chugga. Stop number three. All you sons of bitches getting on. Get on. You're w- all you sons of bitches getting off, get off. And all you sons of bitches pissed off about the delay, go talk to the fucking bitch in the kitchen. You're worse than Anthony. You just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. You ruined it. <sighs> Thanks, guys. We waited three and a half minutes for that. Happy for all of us. It wasn't three and a half. It was like two. All right, I got a call. Thank God. Hold on. Hold on, caller. I got to get you in. And I'm, I keep hitting the Skype, but I, I just answered a call. Stop calling. I've got to get this figured out where it just automatically comes in. I still, I, I think we have to get a European version of, of, yeah, of maybe Skype. So. I think JG sent me a European version of the uh, of the program and tells me it's going to work. I, I don't know. I mean, he, he blew his soundboard up, so I don't know if that's true or not, yeah. but. Good God. All right, I actually don't have a call at the moment, so if somebody call. I don't know what's happened. There it's we go. It's ringing. I'm trying, okay? I know. It's late. We've got a lot going on. Got a lot happening. 
Yeah, it'd be it, it would help if once we take a call, we don't get more calls <laughs> because it all comes into my little thing here. And I anyway, caller who who we got? Who's on? Uh, this is Larry Joe. What's up, Larry Joe? How are you? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, I was just called. Nothing really about the game. That's so, even better. <laughs> no, I just uh, I decided I'm gonna write a musical. <laughs> And I just need advice. I was either going to do the rise and fall of Hugh Freeze <laughs> or the whole NCAA Hugh Freeze situation. The rise and fall of Hugh Freeze oh. could be really interesting. Well, and, and I had some ideas for some of the songs. I've got Coaches and Loner Cars, oh my. Yeah. Lindsey Miller, Lindsay Miller Esquire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, phone Record Blues. Yeah. And Slimming and Slamming. And why did he abandon me? That was the Leo Lewis number right there. So, I don't know. I'm just thinking, would it be better to do Hugh Freeze, like a bio play about Hugh Freeze, or do the whole NCAA thing as the focus? No, the bio of Hugh Freeze would be really good. Very complex character. <laughs> Lindsey Miller wearing a yeah. an Ole Miss football big offensive lineman knee brace into the courtroom is still one of the most memories that I that I take with me forever. And you weren't even there. I was not even there. I, I had to tell you about it. I could even get one of them barrister wigs, you know, with the English court. Have not put one of those on. What have you been sipping on? Me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Clear American tea lime. Well, Walmart. what? Walmart. Oh, like the sparkling Clear water Mart. stuff? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I haven't... I haven't touched alcohol since 2000. I woke up in New Orleans with no pants in 2006. No, I don't drink alcohol. And that was and that was enough, right there. 13 years later. Well, Bourbon Street's cold in the morning. I'll, did I'll you did, did you retrace your steps? What happened the night before? I don't know. I still ain't found the pants. Did you wake up alone? Well, there's people on the street. Okay. You know, oh, street. literally on the street. Yeah, I was well drunk. Yeah. Okay. All good. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Enjoy the show. We'll jump right back in here. Absolutely. You want to jump back in? At, at this point, yes. Is that right? All right. Hold on one second, caller. Getting you logged in. All right. Who we got and where are you from? This is Lee. Lee? Oh. Where, where are you, Lee? I'm outside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me tell you what, what what hurt me tonight. I don't – I'm past the football deal. Okay. Is – I, I, I brought my family and everybody, you know, is everybody wants something to eat. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm cheap as hell, so I'm thinking this damn fourth quarter dollar hot dog deal is the way to go. So I held everybody off. Fourth quarter gets there. We walk down. Guess what? They're out. No hot dogs. They are out of hot dogs. That's a sin. And, um, yeah, it hurt. It hurt a lot. And then I had to – shit, I went from spending $4 to like $40 all, and then it was just – What'd you do for the $40? What'd you night. get? What'd you get? Oh, shit, some pizza, maybe a, a Chick-fil-A sandwich, pizza. I don't have a clue. They had all kind of stuff, what kind but, of, uh, which, which I what, guess everybody was – What's your pizza of choice? What, when you in a, in a desperate moment, what's your – does it matter, or do you, is there something specific you want? Oh, if I'm if you're talking, you're not talking about at the game. Obviously, you're just talking about in general. Uh, either. Well, in general, I'm uh, just generally I'm a huge Domino's thin crust pepperoni. You can just put anything you want on there: onions, bell pepper, jalapenos. Uh, I mean, that's pineapple. You know, uh, no, you just said no. I can put anything I want. I, mean, on I there. like pineapple. That's disgusting. Well, yeah, I mean, you can. I'm not going to eat it. I'm with I you. Mean, I mean, I don't. You're I against like, like the Hawaiian pizza, pizza I mean, with the ham and the pineapple. Oh hell yeah! It's no, I disgusting. like the white. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. But I like sausage but, and jalapeno. Yeah, I'm Italian. Fan of that Sausage. Too, but, 
Sure. I, I like it's Italian, by the way. Italian. Um. Yeah, yeah. It's. Did you have any of those uh, alcoholic uh, beverages at the game tonight? Oh no, I don't do that. Oh, you don't. You hadn't had one. I'm tonight? totally. I'm. You're no, sober. Uh, totally against that. Oh, okay. I'm. A, I'm more into. I'm. I'm. A, I'm. I'm more into uh, natural remedies myself. Oh. But okay. the. Uh, Did you do that at the game? Well, you know. I mean, you know, smoke them if you got them. Okay. I mean, I'm not turning you in. No, I, 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 I'm not I being a narc or I, anything. I, yeah. Just... Well, no, I, no, I'm just. I, I think at this point, I'm just delirious, uh, deliriously tired uh, more than I am anything Aren't we all? else. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I spent, I've wasted the last two hours of my life trying to call into a damn calling <laughs> show. Two guys sitting there drinking their life away and. <laughs> So I don't know if that, that says something about me. I, guess. I, think, I think it's I, me. I think it's more on you than on us, it. frankly. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, it is. That's You're a right. new problem. You, yeah, it is. Yeah, but no, seriously, about the whole football. I know everybody's late. And everybody's about ready to go to bed. I, but I was thinking about something. I was, I, I, you know, it dawned on me that, and I and I blamed it on getting older. You know, we all stuff change. Your your priorities change. You know when. I was probably, I'm 40 now. When I was in my 20s, you know, Ole Miss losing could ruin in my entire weekend, you know. But when you get to the point where you got kids and things are busy, you know, you, your priorities change, obviously. And I was thinking about that earlier and uh, we were leaving the game. But I honestly, I don't know that my fandom has changed necessarily. And I hate to say this. But I just honestly just don't give a shit anymore. And I think that says more about uh, if you want to put your finger on the pulse of what's going on with, and it's not just me and people my age, it's other people that I've talked to as well. It's just, the you know, it's complete apathy at this point. I mean, I honestly, I mean, obviously I would love for them to win tonight and I was hooked, you know, I, I, they, they reeled me in, but. At some point, you you know, when you've seen this movie thousands of times, you know how it ends. But I think I've come to the realization, uh, the older I get, that it just kind of, you are what you are. And that's just the way it's going to be. And I just don't really care anymore. And, um, and the, the, the amount of money that that we all spend every year to, to do this thing is starting to get a little bit ridiculous. Um you know, if it wasn't for my uh, my kids loving it as much as they do, we would. I mean, I would. I'd have give it up. You know, now you know you got the you got the big screen on the back porch and every. You know, they got to give you a reason to want to come. It's not like it was when I was growing up. I mean, that's the only damn thing you had to do. And if you wanted to watch the game, you better be there. I agree. So, I mean. I, I just think that's to the, and and if and I had missed I bet you I hadn't I can count on one hand the games the home games I've missed in thirty five years and I can I, there's zero chance I'm going to the New Mexico State game. Do you know our boy Anthony? And <laughs> we we need Anthony. I'll Anthony, yeah. yeah, you know you know our boy Anthony. Anthony, uh, Anthony, who? Uh, I'm not sure. You weren't hanging around last week, huh? No, I, I okay. well, no, I listen. I listen to you. Y'all you, you, okay. get me through. Yeah, all all jokes aside, I do look forward to your 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 podcast every day. It it helps me. I appreciate it. That. Definitely breaks up the monotony. But no shit. I mean, I'm serious. The whole if if I'm to the point where I don't care, and I'm telling you 100, percent I'm not going to the New Mexico State game. I don't know where the people that were just halfway in, where they're at. I mean, now, I may go to the LSU game, but the only reason I'll go is I can have family that live down there. They may come up. If they want to go, I'll go. Other than that, I'll just go spend the weekend at the hunting camp. I can watch the first 10 minutes, and when I know the damn game's over, I can cut it off. Thanks for the call. Yeah, appreciate Appreciate it. it. I understand. Go right back here. Yeah. Uh, grab yeah. another one. Let's see. One second. Give me. Give me a second. He was kind of worked up. I'm saying this number. How many times did you call tonight? I I, re- I really kind of welcome your uh, persist per- persistence here. Hey Chase and yeah. Bubba, how y'all doing tonight? Hey, hey Bubba, what's up? 
All right, I had to call back again and tell y'all what happened. I was being too loud. Okay. My wife, she, she said, you talking too loud, get the hell out of the trailer. She went out. She'd take the trash out and the dog out. She'd unlock me out of the trailer. Oh, no. So I'm sitting here on the porch in the front. She, at least she gave me a blanket, I'll say that. I ain't lying to y'all either. I'm being yeah. straight up. What's, what's her name? I'm just a little bit drunk. What's your wife's name? Hmm? Mary. Mary. So she, anyway, she she doesn't like me. She does this about twice a month. You got like, you got like a quilt, an electric blanket. Give me a, a throw. Give me a description of Mary. I want to I want to have a mental picture of Mary. Kind of s- set the stage, if you would. Um, she's she's right good looking. I mean, you know, she's got she's got some weight on her though. Right. Just to let let you know. I mean, you know, she's well, we've had four youngins, so you yeah. know. But that's just this the way it rolls. But anyway, how, how many girls? Yeah, how many boys? Two, two and two, or three and one? What do you have? No, man, I got uh, I got four girls. Four My girls. last sale. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. So your sperm are yep. slow. Yeah, yeah. Ain't, ain't, well, you it's know, okay. It's all right. Yeah, I don't know if they're mine or not. <laughs> Half right, the time, right. I ain't gonna lie to you. Well, Mary's a good-looking woman. I get it. She is, she she used to be, but you know things yeah. change. People get old. Hell, right. I'm almost fifty this year. But anyway, that's old. She she still she locks me out about twice a month. But I got an electric blanket. But anyway, it's all right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I was just getting ready to I was getting ready to tell y'all some of these guys are so you know they're just born there. Uh, Jeffrey called, and I actually like that. But uh, you know, anyway, I I just look forward to what the conference on uh the coaches thing on Monday that they have. Cause you know, you and Neil like both. I love it. you it's, love that. Dang it's my thing. favorite 30 minutes of the week. Yeah. I'll tell you what, excuse are like back said, everybody's got one. They all stink, you know? Yeah. So anyway, thanks Get for taking sleep. my call again. I, Absolutely. I got, yep. Appreciate it. I was trying to answer right there and it was a missed call. Call back. I'll take it. It's only twelve forty four. We'll keep going. What the hell? <laughs> what? Guys, Addison says one a.m. on a Saturday, and this is what I've chosen to do with my life. I mean, I'm beginning to wonder that a little bit. Yeah, but hey, I mean, it's, I'm, uh, I'm starting to question my own because my wine bottle is completely empty. Are you really completely out? Yeah, I'm thinking. I, you, I can't you got decide, a whole bottle. I can't decide whether to open. Who's with this, and where are you from? Hey, it's Jared and Gulfport. Oh, hey, Jared. How are hey, you? Hey, Jared. Hanging in there, uh, watching the Air Force nightcap. Yeah, They're playing at Hawaii. Oh, we got off at ten. We're, we're doing BYU Boise State. So yeah, BYU up twenty eight to twenty five hey, with two seventeen to go. Hey, that puts us tied for first in our division in the Mountain West if Boise uh, loses that one. Oh, so you know, there you go. big night. hanging on for dear life. Good luck. Yeah. So uh, and, and y'all be pleased to know there was a, a, a drive to start the third quarter that took half the quarter. Ooh, so that is exciting. You know, right along, that but a, Hawaii that, throws the ball a lot. That is a sports writer's wet sure. dream. Yeah, but we're playing Hawaii and they throw the ball a bazillion times a game, so the game's taking longer than it should. But Air Force football aside, so on, on our game, uh, kind of a an, an observation. See if you guys agree or disagree, and then a question. So the observation. Uh, it seemed to me tonight was maybe the first time that everybody, every coach on our on our side, got completely out coached, with the exception of McIntyre. Uh, he seemed like he did a pretty good job, and our guys just got gassed there at the end. And then the question: It seems like Corral just throws deep a lot, like all the time. Like on the, I remember, I forget exactly when it was. It was late in the game, and it was third and two, and I think we were only we were down three maybe. And he threw the deep ball, and it was incomplete. Yeah, Do you think that's maybe like a remnant of a of a Longo type thing? No. I think it was the play call. Maybe or something? No, I, listen as you much as it, as much as it would be fun to blame this on Phil Longo, I I, I think he is completely blameless. Yeah, and th- thanks, Jared. We'll talk about it as we come on. Um, yeah, no, I, Longo's blameless. This is it, it was the play call, my opinion. Yeah. I think that's exactly what it uh 
what it was. I think it was the play call. They I have think abandoned that, the mid range game, and it's a it's a huge problem. It, it's it's the story of the game, in my opinion, from that standpoint. I, I think that's the thing to really take is there's no way to get a rhythm and continuity without that. So, caller, appreciate the uh, persistence. Who I got with us, and where are you from? Hey, man, this is Justin from uh from Ridgeland. What's up, Justin? Man, I'm I'm hanging out. I, I just uh, I had a couple of questions about the QB thing because Neil seems so convinced that uh, Corral was the guy, and so I just wanted to know why you feel like Corral's the guy. Well, I, I don't necessarily think Corral's the guy as much as I think Plumley is so one dimensional that I just worry about the yeah. abil- the ability to make that work long term because I've been waiting for a team to do what Texas A and M did tonight, and that is yeah, and we. When Definitely he, didn't didn't execute with him on the, on the field yeah, as far as, as but, plumbing goes. But it's kind of like what Chase was saying just then, right, Justin? It, it, which is they can't execute a mid range game with Plumley on the field. I mean, we, we're I now, feel like the the corral the corral issue though is we can't execute a mid range game with him either because he can't make the decision. He's not a good decision maker. And, oh, there's no question. It, it, look, it's the line that we used earlier. It's that neither one of them. Yes. They haven't separated agreed, themselves. Agreed. No, either way, so you're picking your poison. You're either going, yeah. okay, Corral's got the better arm, he's got the worst decisions. Or you've got Plumley who gives you this run tool that's elite. But you're but that's you, it. Yeah, you're hoping for passes that can just sort of back the box up at all. Well, you're hoping for but PI. The, yeah. you're, you're hoping for passes. Deep balls and pass interferences when yeah, you throw it. That's what you're hoping yeah, for. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. I just with Rich Rod looking so upset when Corral messes something up. It's just like, come on, man. We, he likes we Plumlee because Plumlee makes better continuity. decisions, in my he does. opinion. He does. Strictly my opinion. Yeah, I think I, I think at this stage in their in their respective developments, John Rice is a yeah. better decision maker than Matt Corral. At this stage in their respective developments, Matt Corral's a better passer than Plumlee. Here's Even the, though he can't. Here's the bottom line. No, if if sorry. there was a way you could morph the two of them together, you'd have a pretty good quarterback. But that, yeah, I mean, it doesn't that's work what like we that. all hope for. Yeah, it, it doesn't yeah, work exactly. like that. And and so you know, I'm I'm a big Chase will vouch for this. I'm a big believer in, in cliches. Cliches stick around for a reason, right? You know, I mean, whatever they are. Yep. There's a cliche about quarterback play that has stuck around for generations, which is if you're playing two quarterbacks, you don't have one. I, I disagree with that actually, because Dan Mullen's doing a pretty decent job of it right now. Yeah, but his quarterback right now is Trask. <laughs> uh, and yeah, but his his backup guy can throw a little bit better than than Plumlee can. But they're it, still it, running a two QB system. Well, they are. But okay, so all right, Steve Spurrier's pulled it off from time to time, and Dan Mullen's doing a, elephant, an ad, admirable job. Elephant in the room. Dan Mullen's a really good football coach. <laughs> He is. He is. I agree. I agree. And I don't know that we can uh, say it, it that. I don't know that we can. the fact s- that Matt Luke is out of his element. Well, that's possible. And listen, if we're going to be honest about ourselves about this whole thing, Rich Rodriguez did not win at Michigan, and Rich Rodriguez did I not. Mean, he did not, not win not at not Arizona. Good. He did not win at Michigan or Arizona. And so he, I'm at, not acting like he's good. Yeah, right. So at some point, you have to say maybe this is a bigger issue than what we're making it out to be. I think we all agree. I mean, Glenn Boyce being the the chancellor. Come on, we're, we're, this is a bigger issue. Yeah, no, I agree. Thanks for the call. Uh, I just, you know, yeah, thank you. Get somebody from Atlanta in. Yeah, take one. Let's let's go to Atlanta because it's. It's almost two in the morning in Atlanta. So you're kind of curious what this is yeah, about, right? There might be something happening. Oh, hold on. I thought I had it. Well, hell, call back if you're from Atlanta. I missed it. I thought we had it and then hung up. BYU just beat Boise. Okay. That's a Mississippi number. I'm, I'm waiting on Atlanta. If you're from Atlanta, call back. 678, that's Missouri, right? I'm not sure. You're not up on this? I'm not. Why? I don't know. Just take somebody's call. Are you going to get another bottle of wine or what? what I'm are you thinking doing? about it. Are you really? I'm thinking about it, but it's a little late. What do you have to do in the morning? Nothing. All right. The, all right. I just grabbed one because I get tired of. Uh... Hold on. I'm not getting. You okay? Well, I'm not. I mean, we're 
two hours and 20 minutes into the show now. I'm I'm aware. Okay. Six, seven, eight. Is Atlanta. Hey, what's up? What's up? Who's this? All right. Nobody can hear it. Uh, hold on, Alex. Oh, oh, you're here, there. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry you are there. there. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. What's, What's your, your wife's, wife's name? name? Susan. Is Susan, Susan still, still up? up? Hell no. She went to bed two hours ago. Ah, uh, it's weak. Her two, her, her two friends are Mallory and Lauren. Are they up? All three of them were blondes. All three of them are blondes, varying, varying, uh, varying shades of blondes. Are either Mallory or Lauren up where they could talk to us? They're both up right now. Could we speak to one yeah, of them, please, right here. for proof? Yes. But you have to guess, but you have to guess which one is more blonde, Mallory or Lauren? Uh, I will guess that Lauren is more blonde than Mallory. <laughs> I think you got that right. I'm not sure. You nailed it. So this is Lauren. And this is LA. Hey, Lauren. What's <laughs> up? Mallory. Hey. What's up? How are you? I'm I'm great. Well, I'm well, I'm so much better now that I get a chance to talk to you. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm so excited to talk to you. What's happening in the hey, ATL? Y'all doing a good job with this job. I'm sorry. What's happening in the ATL tonight? It's like two in the morning, and you're talking to us. So, I say it must be a happening night if you're if you're, if you're stuck night. watching a YouTube show at <laughs> two a.m. I mean, really, I'm 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 worried for you. Have y'all have y'all watched or heard anything about Atlanta sports recently? Uh, we got the Atlanta Braves who just completely suck. The Falcons are terrible. We're just sitting up here. Ole Miss lost night. I know. I'm, 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 I'm really crushed won. about the Falcons. I've been losing sleep about it. I mean, it's awful. I know. It's terrible. So we're just sitting up here. It sucks. Com- commiserating over our, are, are okay, well, our bad dancing skills and our bad our bad sports teams. So what, what, what are you guys drinking to stay up till 2 a.m. watching YouTube? What, what, what's going on there? Give me a little scene. Jay, yeah. Jay, yeah. we're drinking some Jefferson Reserve. Uh, would, okay. would you? Would that be good for you? That's fine. I have no problem with that. All good. And the ladies are drinking a little wine, huh? Why? What are y'all drinking? We actually just logged in about ten minutes ago, wine. and we didn't believe this was really live, so we had to call in. So, and, and guess what? We stopped to to log in. We y'all were talking about some some dude's wife in the trailer. We had the Al Green station on. On Pandora, but we cut, but we cut that off to log in and hear you two knuckleheads. I mean, it's it's not it's not Allie and her mom, but we'll take it. Yeah, with with, I mean, with, with, with Mallory and Lauren. So, what, what, were y'all watching the game earlier? Like, what 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 have you been what, what have you been doing tonight? What's been going on the last five hours? We've been listening to Christopher Sherman, bitch. Oh, we were okay. God bless. We were you. at the Ole Miss. <laughs> Texas A&M game. Jake, Jake, tell us about Christopher Sherman. Uh, I'm, I refuse. No. No, th- no, 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 thank you. Um, All right, well, he's going to be so pissed that I'm going to jump off now. <laughs> Will y'all hang in for a little longer? We'll try to take you on home. Oh. All right. Y'all about to cut it off? I don't know. We'll see what, uh, what, what happens. You never know. Somebody, Man, y'all really are doing a good job with it. We appreciate it. Appreciate Thank it, you. absolutely. Some, somebody, uh, somebody mentioning cocaine in the headline. I don't mean, in the in the chat box. That got a little serious all you of a sudden. Knew, for, you knew those guys. I don't know. You I mean, know? I know Christopher Sherman. I don't okay. know who was calling. No, I'm not. Gotcha. Okay. No, I, somebody said that. I don't. I don't, I don't know those guys. I'm okay. Not, I'm not aware. All right. Back to the line. Give me a second, caller. Figure this out. Is the night's going on? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hang, hang tight. Hang You're tight. Fine. You're okay. You're okay. All right. Who we got? And where are you? Where, where, where are you from? Uh, I'm Drew. Yeah, this city in Mississippi. Live in Madison currently. Brick City. Do you know my cousins, Jill uh, and Amy? Wait, what'd you say last night? Uh, Jill and Amy McCready. 
They're from Yazoo City. I don't. Do they still live there? Yeah, no, it's been a long time. Okay. I was curious because I knew you had some relatives from down there. I do. But they're all gone well, now. I'm, I, I've got to stop looking at the screen because y'all are a little lagging on my TV. So, sorry. It's messing me up. But, hey, Neil, have you ever thought of a secondary can, uh, career in, like, maybe – like a male phone escort because apparently all these ladies like really are enjoying calling in to you. Yeah, I have thought about like starting like a like a male phone sex line or something, but I, I, something tells me that it wouldn't go very far. Yeah, well, I mean, if you don't it's think only a strong voice, desire for a bunch of bald dudes in their late forties, I'm gonna guess not. <laughs> well, I'd be it doesn't good have to at be it, I'd be good at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean you don't have to have a live live stream you're kind of you know i think just the voice alone yeah get, seems to get it done <laughs> i could tell them that i was in my 30s and that i had a head full of hair and we could go from there well unfortunately neil i'm i'm well on my way to uh baldness uh my i'm 27 about to be 28 uh, i looked at a picture of my mom's dad and they're about the age of 29 it was uh it was pretty tragic so it's already heading that way, so I've already started to go short and, and buzz to kind of ease that transition. Yeah. Uh, the, the, any advice? The, yeah, I have some advice. The key thing is once you go to the horseshoe, go ahead and it's over. <laughs> At that moment, you've well, got... I call that the cold attack, actually. That's uh, fine. I just... whatever, whatever you want to call <laughs> it, but once you get to that place, it's over, and you have to, you have to accept it, and that's when you need to pull, yeah. out, pull out the razor. And uh, Just shave it. And shave it. And at that point, you need to probably give up some of the carbs because <laughs> the rounder your body is, the when you're yeah. when you're bald, the, just the rounder you look. There's you you lose some of the margin for error. This is tough, man. Because I'm already like I've lost weight, but I drink too much to lose it in my gut. Yeah. And I, what I do you, you do, man? I mean, I can't give up drinking. No, what do I do? no, you don't have to give up drinking. Uh, the, the the key thing is that you have to you have to kind of give up. If the food is white, like white bread, white flour, white yeah. potatoes, you need to give that up. So yeah. like paleo type stuff, basically, is kind of the key. Yeah, and then that way you can still drink some calories. Like I didn't yeah. give up beer because I, I love beer, but I did give up. Amen. White rice, white potatoes, uh, flour, Ooh, that's tough. stuff like that. Mm. I, I, fried food. I don't eat fried food at all. You have to surrender. You have to give up some stuff. I can give up the fried. It's just the the, the potatoes and the, the some of the other stuff. I get it, though. Hey, uh, Larry quick. Joe says you use cocaine. I, I do not. <laughs> I, 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 I do not endorse that, but it is a thought. Well. It, it would get the job done. Uh, Neil, question. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> what, what, what's the, what are your opinions on double bottles of wine? I've kind of, I'm in this weird stage of life where I have a child, a wife, and very little money to spend on alcohol. So, yeah. the double bottle has been a, a, a great a value to my, my, my you mean budget. Like the, like and, the uh, big bottle of Woodridge, big bottle. Woodbridge or something? Yeah, yeah, I typically go like Beringer yeah. or uh, let's see, I have this uh, Rex Goliath, <laughs> which it's okay. I mean, it's fine. It's not the best wine in the world, but it, it gets the job done. And then I, I've been kind of settling for uh, Evan Williams, Barreled and Bond, and uh, yep. Old Granddad yep. as well because I kind of uh, so twenty I, bucks. I, I, have like a, I, have a, I have a theory on this, and you can try it. Which is, is if. Okay. If you get a little of the good stuff and you your first glass is the good stuff, you can go mm -hmm. from there to like the bad stuff and your taste buds are a little <laughs> numbed and you're okay. Yeah. It's but that's the hard thing, man, is I had a bottle of E. H. Taylor uh small batch and uh unfortunately it was gone in like two and a half weeks and <laughs> it uh it went real quick. Uh, so I have to just train myself to realize that uh, I have a champagne taste on a beer budget. So yeah, uh, well, and there's ways to make up for that. I mean, you know, the kids don't really need the extra set of clothes. Uh, they don't <laughs> cut some holes on the end of the shoes. I mean, how old how, how old are your kids? 
uh, she's only she's not even two years old. Okay, yet, so, so let me ask you. She's a question. the first grandchild all, on top of that, so most of her clothes. So let me <laughs> ask you a question. By, uh, grandparents. Let me ask you a question. Chase and I have had this conversation before. Please go ahead and tell me your extensive memories from being two. Oh yeah, they're they're super deep. Yeah, but, uh, her, no, hers won't be either. Don't remember so, so like all the extra clothes <laughs> you're buying for her is a complete waste of money. Uh, <laughs> That's money that would be better. Please tell my I wish my wife were awake right now because I was. You can show her the, the replay tomorrow. Well, go wake her up right now. Put, put, her, put her on the phone. I'll I'll tell her these uh, well, things. Well, I would, but I'm trying to have sex tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. So yeah, I'm planning to ahead. Rest. You know, once you get old yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all know the deal when you get to a certain point. <laughs> yeah, you'll get to a certain place where that doesn't matter anymore. And and when it does, it's 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 empowering. Yeah, well, that's the, it's kind of like what the Seinfeld is at George, you know, when uh, he's he's holding off and all of a sudden becomes a, a genius. Uh, I'm I keep waiting for that to happen. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah, but maybe. Um, hey, Chase. By the way, yep. Uh, your wife is your wife's name Kara. Yeah. By chance. Okay, so Jay was was talking about her a little bit on the podcast. <laughs> and I put together recently that she was a, a recruiter, maybe, for Ole Miss. Yeah. yeah. So she came to my high school when I was a, a senior. And she was like, I mean, I was already going to Ole Miss, obviously. Hence, why would I call into the show? But uh, anyway, and I came up for uh, some sort of, like, preview or day. And I got a, a ticket, obviously, from OPD because they're assholes. And uh, your wife just like went off on the OPD people over the phone, got me out of the ticket. So really big fan of you just because of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I'll pass cool. that along. Uh, and, and, and Neil, by the way, your wife, I didn't even know. I just started listening to the podcast and I just got married. My wife was still in college and, uh, I needed car insurance because her dad had just like all of a sudden cut her out. And I went into state farm. I don't know if she still works there, but, uh, <laughs> walked in and she was the only person available. <laughs> Talked to your wife for a while. And, She's real nice. I, I get where Jay gets those feelings from. I mean, yeah. I, I would never <laughs> try to <laughs> trespass that, that bond by eating eating olives with your wife. But right. at the same time, totally understand. She's cool, cool dude, cool chick. Love it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good uh good caller there. All right. Uh I, I got a I have got a a number. Call back one more time. We'll get you and we'll probably end it with uh with this call, I think I know who it is. So uh, give me, give me, give me a shout again. I couldn't answer while I was on the line there. So if you're listening, just uh, stay with us, and then we'll, uh, we'll 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 get out of here. Here we go. All right, one second. Let me let me clue you in. Turn the uh, turn the computer or the TV down so it's not uh, giving a uh, a delay. That would be awesome. All right, who we got in front and where from? Josh and Oxford. Oh, hey, what's up? What's up, fellas? How are y'all? Uh, we're lovely. It's up, one, it's, it's, it's as good as we can be at 1.04 a.m. talking on YouTube. <laughs> well, I appreciate you talking to me. I actually have you guys blowing up on a big screen. It's kind of weird. Yeah, that, that <laughs> is kind of weird. Uh, we, we, we get that a lot. It's fine. It's kind of a lot. It's fine. There you go. Well, uh, I apologize to you, Neil. My my questions are kind of chase-centric. But by the way, the show rocks, guys. We really enjoy watching. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm a little scared. Uh, go but ahead. But the two questions. Sure. <laughs> chase? Let's suppose I'm Glenn Boyce with a uh, better mustache, and I hire Chase Parham okay. as AD. What do you do from here on out? And then after, a little bourbon. If you don't mind, we could talk a little bourbon. Uh, I collect my paycheck, number one, because I'm assuming that I'm going to get the foundation to give me at least 300000 right? I'm giving you huge money, you and I'll even let money? you be the guy that looks for the job. Uh, I'm doing what, look, 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 I, I'm doing what we've been talking about. I'm, I mean, the things that everybody's aware of, I'm, I'm, I'm retooling student recruitment. Uh, we're going to focus, not, not, we're not only going to focus in state, but we're going to focus on. Wait, is he making you the AD or the chancellor? Oh, we're we doing AD or chancellor. I'm sorry. What are we doing? AD. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Going boy, the AD. I thought you were making, I thought you were, I thought you were, I thought you were making me chip pickering. I thought you were putting me second in charge of the university. That's not going to happen. That's not that. That's no. rumors and such. It's just a rumor. <laughs> Sorry, AD. You're the AD. All right, am I? Am I are you yeah, on? you're the AD. How, how are you? How are you handling all the turbulence in football right now? Uh, let's see. I well, like this call. You like this call? Yeah. Put me on the spot a little bit at one of one oh six a.m. See what happens. Uh, look, I, I need to know the money situation overall. I need to know how much coin is in the uh, the coffers, if you will. 
because look, I, I don't think Ole Miss was flush with cash right now. I need to know is are, are right. buyouts feasible? How many ma- major donors are willing to pay some buyouts? I think I need to know. Also, I kind of need to see a little more information on how many people are at this New Mexico State game because here's the deal with Matt Luke. In all seriousness, let's just play it out and say that the final record is something four and eight or something where we're having this conversation. Because obviously, if it gets to six or something, we're not having this conversation. So at four, well, we're having this conversation. I'm, I'm making a point. So if it's at four, it's are you losing more money and where are you with the program by getting and making a change or not making a change? Because look, there is a net situation here to where even if the buyout doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're losing more money than that with the stadium and with the lack of crowds and the lack of concessions and everything else, you still have got to factor that stuff in. So if that is at a spot where you go, hey, we can't survive this the rest of this year and then next year, barring that crazy start, unless you have some upsets or something when they're one in whatever, when Florida comes in or whoever it is they play, I do think there's a financial obligation to try to do something to reset things and get things moving back in the right direction. Fantastic. Appreciate the answer. The other thing I want to talk about is a little bourbon. Sure. I've collected bourbon for years. Used to hunt the incredibly expensive stuff and drink it quite frequently. I now drink basically Maker's Mark and a couple other lesser expensive things. I walked into a bourbon shop in Nashville and I hadn't been in one in a, in a year or two. And the selection was so freaking huge, so massive. I couldn't make my mind up. So many things I had never heard of. Lived in Kentucky for a long time. Like, what do you think about the bourbon? I almost, like, don't want to drink it anymore because so many people drink it and there's so much, I don't know, hubbub, whatever. What do you think about the the bourbon bubble? I do think the bubble is going to pop at some point. I think they're going to move on to something else. I don't know if it's Mezcal. I don't know if it's rum. But I do think that thing's going to pop. Look, find the five or six things that you like. John Dean seems to think it's rum. Some people think it's rum. Yeah, he thinks it's rum. I've got a couple bartender buddies that thinks it's mezcal eventually. I think it's mezcal. Yeah, people think it's mezcal. Either way, my point being, some of the the fame around it, all that kind of stuff, the, the, the hubbub, as you called it, it's going to pop a little bit. Now, look, prices are still, still going to stay crazy on the secondary market. It is what it is. Oh, but, dude, they are stupid. Yeah, but you don't have to. There's plenty of stuff, right. the 40 50 that's 60 exactly 70 right. $80, that's going to taste very similar. I mean, I, I, look, it's hard to find, but I'm drinking Widow Jane 12 right here that's as good as almost anything else you're going to run across, period. Oh, yeah. F- figure out your, what, what – what, and I'm talking to you. I'm up for the person that's just now getting into it a little bit because you've been collecting for a long time. But find – figure out, do you like the really weeded bourbon, bourbons? Do you like the more high-proof you know, high proof bourbons? Figure out what it is and then start experimenting in those categories, and you'll find whatever you want inside 80 bucks. I, I just ignore well, – like, I found a other, bottle I mean, of- I, I still like collecting, and if I run across great bottles, great. But I ignore a lot of that crap. It just doesn't matter to me right. anymore. You- I mean, it, right. it, it is what it is. You're a barrel proof guy, Neil. What do you enjoy? Are you you in that eighty to ninety range? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, like t- tonight, I I'm, was drinking a bottle of, of uh, Eagle Rare, which was like thirty two dollars, and, it, and it's good. I like it. I mean, I, I, oh no, no, no. I'm in, he I'm meant in proof. Eight, you eight like the more weeded, like, lower uh, proof alcohol. stuff, yeah, no, the stuff that's going to burn your tongue up, though, no, aren't you? I mean, I like the like ninety six to one hundred proof. I don't like going much above Atta that. Boy. Like Chase likes. That's like, right in my seat. I like lighter fluid. Chase likes like 140 yeah, you proof. Yeah, like, you like the cast drink stuff. You like that 126. Well, you know, I do, but here's what's funny about that. I was talking to a buddy about that a few weeks ago, and I like the complexity that typically you have to find that in, in that unless you've got really, really good bourbons at the lower proofs. You know what I mean? It's not even necessarily the heat. It's yeah. just that you get more flavor and more complexity at those proofs than maybe you do at the stuff that's 90 or 95, unless we're talking about some really you know crazy bottles. I, mean, I like the high proof stuff. Back in the day, I'm sitting here looking at a bottle of Stag and a bottle of Handy, a bottle of Weller 12, and I take the Weller 12 over any of them. Any of them all yeah, of I mean, this Widow Jane's like right at 100. It's 49.5. Right on. Man, I appreciate you guys taking the call, and you guys have gone next level with the show. Henry, guys, this is awesome. I really enjoy coming home and crying and watching you guys after games. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate <laughs> it. It is uh it is one ten. I think it is probably time we're about to wrap. Um, I'm not getting a call in at the moment, so that's probably a good sign yeah, that we've we been can, going uh, two hours thirty eight minutes and thirty two seconds. Okay, we'll put this up uh, 
as a podcast. We will uh, we'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm not doing it tonight. I'm no. going to bed. Yeah. But either way, appreciate it as always. We'll do it again. Uh, not next week because it's a bye week. We'll do it in it two is. weeks when Ole Miss uh, heads to the Plains to face the Auburn Tigers. Probably a lot of the same subject matter, frankly, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll drink some alcohol. We'll take it's, you through it's it. It's predictable. And we'll, uh, we'll have it. Also, our podcast during the week have been video as well. We're looking at the chat box. We're not taking calls yet for those, but we are looking at it, and we will uh, keep following it as well. So appreciate all the guys hanging out, and we'll talk to you again uh, on Monday for the Oxford Exxon podcast.